Race, Darrell Commodity, and Lee's Cooling and Heating. Now, let's head to the stadium for the play-by-play -play tonight with Connor Harbett and Kyle High. You're listening to Coffeeville Community College Football on 98.1 KUSN. And a very pleasant good afternoon to you and yours. We are here at Veterans Memorial Stadium here in Coffeyville, Kansas, for today's Jayhawk Conference matchup between the Coffeyville Red Ravens and the Independence Pirates. It's Connor Harbin here with you today on the play-by-play. -play. Of course, joining alongside me is going to be my partner, Kyle High. Two teams with winning records going out of here today. Coffeyville looking to get back into the win column after a 20 to nothing loss to Garden City last week. And, of course, Independence, they picked up their victory uh, two weeks ago. They were actually had last week and off but of course should be an exciting game today of course Caulfield coming into this game with a record of three and two independence their record is four and two we'll get into things here in a little bit of course obviously a very shortened pregame here today we apologize for that ran into some technical difficulties that we kind of had to work through but we are here now and we will bring you this Jayhawk conference matchup here in about four minutes believe it or not so like I said very very short pregame here today but Kyle again Two teams that are uh, very familiar with each other. Obviously, big rivalry game here today in the Montgomery County Showdown. Absolutely. It doesn't uh, really, the records don't matter when these two teams uh, lock, uh, hook horns. It uh, should be a pretty good matchup tonight. Uh, at the very least, uh, Coffeyville will end the season with a 500 record if they were to lose today uh, with a 3-3 three and three record. Uh, Andy, right now 4-2. So these teams are really close together, and I guarantee you it doesn't matter if this was the fall, spring season, or if they were playing this in the dead of winter, uh, they don't care. They want bragging rights until the next time they play again. Yeah, for sure. And, of course, taking a look at the season, not the season series, the all-time series between these two teams, Kyle Coffeyville with a huge lead. But Independence, they've won three of the last four. So this game is a whole lot about bragging rights. But, of course, we take a look back to last week. Coffeyville struggled. That's the right word to use there, under 100 yards of total offense. But, of course, we take a look back to about four or five weeks ago at this point, 29 to 28 victory over Butler there. So, Caulfield looking to get back some positive momentum here to end the season and, of course, maybe beat their uh, their rivals along the way. So, like I said, we got to get a few sponsors in here today. So, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. But when we come back, we should be ready for opening kickoff. We'll come back here in about two minutes. Don't go anywhere. It's Red Ravens football here on US 98.1 KUSN. At CRMC Medical Group, our primary care physicians and providers focus on ways to keep you and your family in good health as well as care for them when they're not. Our family medicine and women's health physicians are accepting new patients. We have convenient office locations in Coffeeville and Independence with extended and Saturday hours in Coffeeville. If you need a physician or need to make an appointment, please call 620-688-6566. That's 620-688-6566. Over the past 20 years, many kind words have been used to describe Windsor Place, the services we provide to seniors, as well as the people who work for us. There is one word in particular that we've come to cherish. That word is unique. Maybe that's because the word unique so perfectly describes everything we do, everything we are, and everything we strive to be. If you would like to know more about what makes Windsor Place unique, we invite you to call 620-252-4929. There's a lot going on in the world right now. At H&R Block, we want you to focus on your business while we handle your books. From payroll and bookkeeping to expert tax preparation and advice, we are ready to put our expertise to work on your small business or personal tax needs. For the year-round services you need and the one-on-one -on -one attention you deserve, partner with H&R Block Business Services. Stop by our offices at 502 West 12th in Coffeyville or 101 East Main in Independence. $1,600 rebate or payments as low as $99 a month for a new Lennox heating and cooling system. Does that sound too good to be true? Well, not at least cooling and heating in Independence, where we offer reliable, groundbreaking, award-winning Lennox products that keeps your air perfect to make you more relaxed and energized. Call Lee's Cooling and Heating at 620-331-2310 for great products, great savings, and perfect air from Lennox. And once again, welcome back here. Veterans Memorial Stadium, the site of today's Jayhawk Conference matchup here between the Coffeyville Community College Red Ravens 
in the Independence Pirates. So once again, Connor Harbour back with you here today. Of course, uh, Caulfield coming in with a record of 3-2, and two, but still ranked in the top 10, actually. Did not fall in this week's NJCAA rankings. That really kind of attests to how strong that Garden City was, that Garden City team we saw last week. However, Independence... Uh, they are still number seven. So it's going to be a matchup between two top ten teams. And like I said, we are just moments away from getting started. Very, very short pregame here today. We'll have a lot of time to kind of talk about things later. But it is going to be Independence to kick things off. Coffeyville is back to receive, and it looks like back to receive for Coffeyville. That is going to be Taven Jackson and Dorian Lewis as well. And on to kick it away for Independence. Trying to get you a number here today, of course, up to the press box here today at Veterans Memorial Stadium. That is going to be uh, Wilson Yee, 5'11", 165 pounds, a freshman out of Littleton, Colorado. You usually don't see the kicker wearing 60s. That's uh, that's uh, interesting, to say the least. Yeah, and it looks like both of them actually yes, going to be wearing yeah, the punter, in the 60s yes. as well. The punter, Joseph Seidel. Hopefully we'll see him a couple times here today if you're pulling for the Red Ravens. But either way, it is going to be Yee kicking off here. But again, Lewis and Jackson back to receive. Should be a good game today. Definitely ready for it. Montgomery County clash. Absolutely. Big rivalry game here today. Montgomery County. Coffeeville and Independence opening kickoff is away. Going to be a solid kick right down the middle. Going to be fielded just a couple yards past the goal line. On the turn, it's going to be Taven Jackson. He's going to be blown up here about the 15. Still on his feet, though. He's going to be able to turn that one to his left. See if he can find himself to the edge. He'll get a couple extra yards before eventually still being pulled within the 20. It'll be first down and 10 for this Coffeeville offense at about the... Now it looks to be about the, see where they spot this one here, about the 19-yard line. Pretty good return there, considering he was a couple yards deep in the end zone. And now we'll see uh, who comes out and plays quarterback this week, because uh, we, we didn't see a whole lot of Lange. And it looks like it is going to be Nick Arve starting things off here for the Confield Red Ravens. Of course, last week saw Colby Lange and Arve share some time, but it looks like Arve going to get the start here today, going to start in shotgun formation. Four wide receivers set, two to each side. Four down linemen here for the Pirates. Looks to be three linebackers set. Arve going to take the snap here on first down. Going to drop back to pass. A simple screen out to the right-hand side. Going to be Star Thomas on the reception. Moving to his left. Not going to be able to find too much, though. Might actually lost a yard on the play. It's going to turn up to be down second down and 11 or 12. Second down and 11 upcoming. Ball on the 18-yard line. It's kind of how they started the week last week with a little screen pass, and it didn't work then. So we'll see what happens here on the, this next play. And so, of course, Arve getting the start today. Six foot tall, 200 pound, red shirt freshman out of Chandler, Arizona. Going to line up under center now. Going to be an eye formation, one wide receiver to each side, two down backs, including Star Thomas. He'll be your starting running back here today, but we're going to get ourselves a penalty, and it looks like it might be delay of game here on the Red Ravens. And it will be a delay game, so uh, not how you want to start out your opening series. Yeah, definitely a rough start here. Going to set up second down and 16. Ball now on the 13-yard line. You're pinned deep. The return, obviously a great kick from Independence's Wilson Yee to start things off. Just not much room to return things. Give credit to Jackson for being able to bump that one out to the left-hand side, but you definitely don't want to be starting in with side your own 20. So again, I formation, one wide receiver, colors, couple backs to the backfield, including Star Thomas. Snap is made, handoff to Thomas on the right-hand side. He's able to push forward for a couple of yards, maybe one or two on the play, and then we'll set up third down and long. Yeah, it looks like he may have gotten back to uh, yeah around the 14-yard line, so that'll be a gain of one. And now already third down here for the Red Ravens. Yeah, gain of one. We'll sit up third down and 15. Need to get to about the 29-yard line to move the chains. Looks like it's going to be, again, looks to be shotgun formation, but three wide receivers, two to the left and one to the right. Arve going to drop back to pass, looking over towards his left. Going to find a man caught about the 22-yard line, but there's just not going to be enough room to get to the first down marker. And I'll give us our first fourth down of the day. This looks like on the reception it was Cortarius Wilson. It's a gain of about, looks to be a gain of about, excuse me, my math is off today, about 10. However, you're still going to be about five yards shy. Going to set up fourth down about six to go, excuse me. And that will bring out Skylar Seagraves for the first time today. 
Well, I mean, you just uh, that penalty cost them. The delayed game cost them because it would be they may have had a better shot here going for it. But uh, here we go with Seagraves punting. Back to receive the punt here for Independence. That's going to be Cameron Thompson. 5'9", a sophomore of Logansville, Georgia. Punt is away. Going to be a solid punt. It's going to be caught here at about the 39-yard line. Actually having to move forward a little bit for that one, having to dive on that one, but he makes the catch. And it will be Independence back out on offense for the first time here today from the 39, the Independence 39, that is. So we'll get a first look at this Pirates offense. Of course, they have had some very good games this season against teams like Highland, Fort Scott, Dodge City, that sort of thing. But behind the uh, offense, it is going to be Brock Doman. He'll start out in shotgun formation here. Back to pass here on first down. Going to find a man moving forward to about the 48-yard line. It looks to be that is James Meeks on the reception. Excuse me, that's going to be Coffeyville's Deontay Meeks. Deontay Wilson, excuse me, on the reception. Normally you put the home roster on the left-hand side. I don't know why I got confused on that one, but either way, Wilson with the reception. Now of a referee timeout here just to make sure that we get the clock up and running at the right time. But looks to be a pistol formation here on second down and two, second down and short. Doman going to take the snap, hands it off. Nope, going to fake the handoff. Now finds a man, but there to make the stop, that's going to be Brennan Scott getting up there and making the play. The catch was made by Nate Damron, but just had nowhere to go, and that'll set up actually third down. I'm going to say forward progress was stopped at the line of scrimmage, so third down and two. Again, pistol formation. Doming going to take the snap. It's another handoff. Pushing forward is going to be, I believe that was. Looks to be, that was Tyree Carlisle on the carry. It looks like that'll be a first down and 10. Ball on the 50-yard line. So Carlisle pushes through. It's a new set of downs. 11 minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Now shotgun formation, going to take the snap, Doman back to pass. Looking over to his left, going to find Carlisle in the flat. Going to get past the 50-yard line, they pass the original line of scrimmage, but he'll eventually be taken down here at about the 46-yard line. Going to be a short gain here on first down, set up second down and six. Nice, just a nice little screen out there to the left side and uh, getting pretty good yardage, uh, decent yardage here, and it'll be second down here for the Pirates. The second down and seven, actually. They're going to give him three yards on the play. Going to set up quickly here. Doman going to send a man in motion. Two wide receivers to the right. Going to be another handoff here to Carlisle on second down this time. But there to make the stop. That'll be Antavius Fish getting in there. Making the stop and giving Coffeyville its first chance at a third down here. Third down and five. Ball on the Coffeyville 45. Chance for the Red Ravens get a stop here. Force a punt. After Independence got pretty decent field position to start this drive, but the offense, the defense played really, really well last week. So we'll see what that what happens here. Yeah, definitely the defense was the star of the show last week. Doman back to pass here, going to put one across the middle. Actually, going to find a man in motion across the right side, across the middle of the field, I should say. Still on his feet, took about three or four Red Ravens to make the stop there, but that'll lead to another first down on the catch. That's going to be, t- excuse me, Malik Mullins making the reception a freshman out of perry georgia and that'll put the independence pirates within striking distance here they're going to be on the 26 yard line first down and 10 upcoming nine and a half minutes left to go in this first quarter just a nice pass over the middle there was able to find him wide open for the first down now the first down play upcoming going for the end zone wide open Not a man in sight. That's going to be caught for an independence touchdown. Deontay Wilson, his second reception of the day, a defensive breakdown from the Red Ravens there as they just go right through the middle for their first six of the day. 26-yard reception. Wilson, he was just running down the middle, untouched, nobody even near him, and uh, they get the touchdown here to uh, start early on in this Montgomery County clash. That's Wilson's second touchdown reception of the season, and independence will now come on for the PAT. 
as once again it is going to be Wilson Yee to attempt the kick. Snap is good. Kick is going to be blocked. It's actually going to be picked up here by Coffeyville. No, excuse me. It'll be fallen on by Independence. But the PAT is blocked, so it'll remain a six-point ball game. 9-14 remaining here in this first quarter. And the Independence Pirates take a 6-0 lead over Coffeyville. You're listening to Red Ravens Football, US 98.1 KUSN. It's that time of year when the weather can change quickly, sometimes violently. Stay up to date with all the weather's changes and stay in the know when severe weather is threatening. Severe weather coverage is brought to you by Eck Heat and Air and H&H Roofing. So when severe weather threatens, stay in the know by staying tuned to KUSN. Everyone looks forward to a good meal. That's why we do dining differently at Windsor Place. We call it 7 to 7 Dining. Residents can come to the dining room anytime between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. for a home-cooked meal of their choice. Three specials are available throughout the day, along with a full menu, including all-day breakfast. If residents need a treat between meals, they can visit our self-service snack pantries. Come see what makes Windsor Place different at mealtime. Call 620-252-4929. Back here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, a seven-play, 69-yard drive for the Independence Pirates. Took 3:09 off the clock. They lead the Confield Red Ravens six to nothing here early on in this Jayhawk Conference matchup. A 26-yard pass right across the middle of the field to Deontay Wilson for the early score. So another kick here for Wilson Yee. Again, back to receive is going to be Taven Jackson and Dorian Lewis for the Red Ravens. Yee going to kick this one away. Very good kick the first time around, and it looks like this one much of the same. Actually, going to be fielded at about the same position this time, though. Going to have a lot more room to run. That's going to be to the 30. That's going to be Jackson on the return. He'll get all the way to about the 32-yard line. So differing fortunes this time around. And Coffeyville going to start with some nice field position here for their second drive of the day. Absolutely. Uh, Got to put that drive behind you because, uh, I mean... Independence is going to jump on you pretty quickly, so uh, we'll see what the Red Ravens do here, but they got to have a better drive than what they started out with. Yeah, definitely did not really move the ball around the first time, but we'll see if they have some uh, better luck this time through as Arve will line up here. I formation, two wide receivers to the left-hand side. Arve going to send a man in motion. That'll be Cortarius Wilson moving to his left. Are they going to take the snap? It'll be a handoff here on first down. Going to have some room to run, but there will be a flag. This one might be coming back. It's Star Thomas on the carry. He'll be pushed out about the Independence 41-yard line, but again, this one might be coming back. Yeah, it looks like that's in the area of offensive holding, which would bring it all the way back after a fantastic run by Star Thomas. Actually, it looks like that might have been... Well, no, that's going to be Star Thomas. Again, very high up here today. Sometimes the numbers, they deceive me, but... Again... Wait and see what the call is. Flag came out about at the line of scrimmage. Still kind of talking things over here. Oh, no. They picked it up, the flag. They said there was no flag. So it'll be, they'll uh, take the result of the play there, which will be a first, da- huge first down. Yeah, huge carry there for Star Thomas on first down. Going to find the 18 yards to get to midfield. And then, the, well, about eight more. So. All in all, it's a 27-yard carry somewhere in that area and going to give Coffeyville first down and 10, their first play in Independence Territory here tonight. Ball on the 41-yard line. Again, going to go back to the eye formation here. Harvey going to take the snap, draws back to pass. Looking over to his left, just going to chuck one up here. A lot of contact made. No flag is going to be thrown, though. They're going to say, and Isaiah Taylor maybe just tripped over himself there. Instead of being pushed down, and so it'll be an incomplete pass. Well, it was, it was a lot of hand fighting there, though, and then it looked like it could have been a little shove there, but it'll be second down here, though. But, again, that night, that last play by Star Thomas it was a great play because it was a delayed handoff that kind of sucked the defense in to the left side of the offense, and he had a long run on that right side. A uh, room to run in D, 27-yard carry. It's nice to see early in this one after the struggles they had against Garden City Last week, it'll be, again, Arve under center. Three wide receivers to the left this time round. Arve making some pre-snap adjustments here. Now going to take the snap. It's another handoff to Thomas. Thomas trying to push through. Going to get swarmed by a few Pirates. Just beyond the line of scrimmage. Might be a short gain of about one. 
and it'll set up another third down. Yeah, just not much there. Kind of just ran into a pile of people on both sides. Uh, we'll move it about one yard, third down in here for the Red Ravens. Third down and about nine upcoming. Eight and a half. We might have ourselves another punt incoming. Yeah, I mean you're kind of in that no man's land, but it's you know it's too far away for a for a tip to field goals because right now a tip to field goal will be around 60 yards. I don't think he has that. yard line the eight yard line so to speak so solid punt there as yeah but it's around the nine between the eight and the nine yard line yeah that was actually the keith johnson mm -hmm. on the fair catch that's who it was the first time round too like i said kind of confusing that the coffeeville ross is on the right side here today in my little program but either way second week of calling coffeeville football and i apologize messing up a few names here and there but Either way, it'll be Independence Pirates ball first time or second time here today, starting inside their own 10-yard line. It's going to be a five-wide receiver set, so not really hiding what the plan is here on first down. Dropping back to pass, it is going to be Doman rolling out to his right. Going to have a man across the middle. It's going to be hauled in. That catch is going to be made here by, that will be Carlin, Malik Mullins, excuse me. And he'll get out to about the 18-yard line. Going to give him some breathing room. It's a gain of 11 here on first down. And set up a new chain, new first down attempt. Well, he just kind of snagged that out of the air. It was, uh, looked like it was a little bit behind him, but he was able to reach those arms out, snag it in, and uh, get the first down and give the Pirates some uh, breathing room here away from that end zone. Yeah, so early on in this contest, it looks like Independence having their way offensively. They're definitely finding what they wanted to find. It's going to be a quarterback keeper here on this new first down and 10. Going to get himself about five or six yards here on the carry as Doman pushes him well through. Set up second down, and it looks like they'll go ahead and give him about five. No, nope, about six. Second down and four. Yeah, he just took the snap and just went ahead, found some space, and able to set up a very manageable here. It's uh, second and about four. Pistol formation here for Independence on second down and four. Doman with the pre-snap adjustments. Four wide receiver set. Got two to each side. Going to hand it off here on first down. Going to be Carlisle on the carry. Not much room, though, and a flag after the play. And it looks like this one might be hold depending on, or holding excuse me, on Independence. He's judging by the reactions down there on the field. And a very happy Allen Henry down there for the Red Ravens. And a very upset Independence lineman. So this might be holding. This will be big for the Red Ravens if they can push him back on this holding call. And it will be. It'll be holding called on independences that was called on Camuto Lavasa. And so the 10 yard penalty will keep it second down, but I think you'll take the second down at about 14 to go. So second down, 14. Ball's now on the 15 yard line. Six minutes, 50 seconds left to go here in quarter number one. Doman shotgun formation. He'll drop back to pass. Now rolling out of the pocket. Going to be hurried a little bit. Going to toss one up there. Actually had a man open. That one's going to be caught here by Willie Brantley, your leading receiver for the Pirates this season. And that's going to be caught right at around the first down marker. So the penalty ultimately for not. Ultimately doesn't really help too much. As now you've just got yourself a third down and one. Yeah, and again, he got he was able to get up open along the sideline. There wasn't a defender in the area. And now they have the whole playbook here to try to get this first down. And Independence, plenty of different receivers here on the season. Here's a handoff to Carlisle. He's just able to push on through the defensive line here. 
Tackled by a couple of Red Ravens, including Reese Collier. But all in all, it'll be a new set of downs. First down and 10 upcoming as the Pirates just continue to push through. Pat Bowen on the carry, excuse me. Don't know what's up with me here today, Kyle. Well, they have multiple numbers uh, on their uh, on the indie roster, so it makes it a little difficult. And I will sometimes. give myself an excuse there. I think I heard the PA guy say Carlisle as yes. well. But either way, it's Pat Bowen on the carry. Excuse me, won't make that mistake again. As here's another handoff to Bowen on first down, rolling out to his right or spinning around to his right, going to be eventually met by most of the defense here. And that'll be at about the 35 yard line. So pickup of four. I'll give him five, actually. Hmm. Interesting spot. But either way, set up second down and five. Yeah, I thought so as well. I thought he got stopped maybe even a yard back from there to the 35. But uh, we'll, st- uh, yeah, they give him, I think they give him a pretty uh, generous spot there. So second down and five upcoming now is once again going to be shotgun formation. Doman going back to pass. Looking deep. Just going to toss this one up here. One on one coverage. And that one is going to be incomplete. On the. On the coverage, excuse me, that's Brennan Scott able to keep up step for step and makes the excellent play, set up third down and five. Nice play, he stuck to the receiver the entire way, and he actually got himself in a better position to catch the football than the receiver did. The receiver basically had to turn into a defensive back there. So it's third down and five upcoming, ball still on the Independence 36-yard line. Doman again back to pass here, going to start rolling to his left, now has to cut back to his right. Still holding on to the football, actually has to try to keep it himself, and he'll be pushed out of bounds at about the original line of scrimmage. So, excellent play there on the quarterback hurry. That was actually Jordan Crawford getting through the line. You saw Doman wanted to move to his left originally, but immediately had to turn back to his right. Had no option but to keep it, and we'll see Independence punt for the first time today. And it cost a two-yard loss on the play, and now, like you said, Andy has to come out and punt. Good job there by the defense. So, um, a lot better than the first drive, that's for sure. And so back to receive this punt. It's going to be Jacob Prochet. On to punt. It'll be Joseph Seidel. Punt is up. It's going to be a high arc in one. Not too much distance. Prochet going to wave the fair catch. He'll make it around the 35-yard line. So from 36 to 35 we go. And Coffeyville going to get themselves another drive. Still trailing by six here with four and a half minutes left to go in this first quarter. That punt ended up being about 31 yards, and uh, Coffeyville will get pretty decent field position here. The first two drives, it's just it's been a little rough. Uh, there's a, a gleam of hope there, but uh, they got to be able to put together some more plays here. you got to get this dri- get a drive together. New couple of backs here for Coffeyville as they come out on offense for their third drive of the day. Going to be Terrence Johnson lining up at fullback. Dorian Lewis is going to be the halfback here. As once again, Arve steps out, lines up under center. Two wide receivers set, going to send Wilson in motion, heading over towards the left-hand side. Two wide receivers on the left, as it's going to be a handoff here to Lewis, going to try to bounce it to the outside, able to get a couple yards here before he's eventually pushed down at about the 40. Solid pickup here on first down. We'll set up second down and five from the 40. Decent run there. Uh, picked up about, like I said, about four, maybe five yards, and it'll be second and about six. I'm always a yard off. <laughs> One way or another, I'm always about a yard off. But either way, it will be second down and six. You are right here as we cross the four-minute line here in this fourth quarter of play. Again, I formation now going to have two wide receivers towards the right. Again, Dorius Lewis, Dorian Lewis, the down back. Terrence Johnson, your fullback. Arve going to drop back to pass here. Fakes the handoff, looking over to his right. Going to have a man open right on the sideline. That's going to be Wilson who makes the catch. Gets both feet and bounds. That'll be a new set of downs here for the Red Ravens. Nice catch there. Cortarius Wilson just finding himself the out route, able to stop just before the sideline. Arve with the pass right in the general direction of his hands. And so, Coffee will going to make their second trip in your Independence territory today. Let's hope it maybe has some better results than what we saw the last time around. Absolutely. Uh, Good job keeping his feet in on that catch uh, and uh, getting the first down there for the Red Ravens. So, ball now on the Independence 49-yard line. Going to be eye formation. Going to send Wilson in motion again, heading towards the left. Arve takes a snap. Going to be a pitch out towards the right-hand side. Not much going there. And I think we're actually going to be right back into Coffville territory. It'll be a loss maybe of a couple. Maybe spot this one at the 50-yard line. Be about halfway between. But technically, we're back into Coffville territory. It'll be second down and 11. 
Yeah, just not, not much there. The Indy defense, uh, they kind of read that play pretty well, stretched out the offense all the way to the sideline, and again, wasn't able to get much there. So, like I said, second down and 11 upcoming here. And going to line up high formation, one wide receiver to each side. Again, Wilson sent in motion over towards the right. All right, takes a snap. Could be another pitch out towards the right. See if they can get anything more here. We're going to have a flag as they do find a couple of yards. But we'll wait and see what the call is here. So this one was thrown by the back line, Judge. So, wait and see what the indication is. Looks like it'll be holding against Coffeyville. Going to be charged to Jared Miles. And so, that'll back Coffeyville even further into Independence Territory once again, or Coffeyville Territory, I should say. And it'll set up second down in about... Let's see, second down in about... 17, 18 to go. 19 to go. There we go. But again, it's Arve under center. Again, a pitch out to the right. And actually, no, we're going to have ourselves a reverse. Going to toss it off to Isaiah Taylor. He's going to have some room to run. Going to at least be able to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Still on his feet, and that'll be a gain of nine here on a very peculiar play. The pitch out to the right-hand side. I was about to say, that's the third time we've seen it in a row. They're just going to keep pounding it in there until it works, maybe, but no. The reverse to Isaiah Taylor, and he's able to find nine on the carry. A little trickeration there by the uh, offense. You know, and you know the offense loves it when those plays are called. Uh, and he had plenty of room to run. You had a, an, an, an independence player who lost his helmet, but it looked like he was still participating in the play. I thought once you lost your helmet, you had to stop playing uh, the play. That just right second carry of the season. First one went for six yards. That one went for nine. So we're going to have ourselves third down and ten. We're right back to where we started. Ball on the 49-yard line. Need to get to the 39 to keep this drive alive. It's going to be Arve in shotgun formation. Three wide receivers. Got two to the left and one to the right. Arve going to drop back to pass here on third down. Going to be pressured out of the pocket, and there's just nowhere for Arve to go. He's going to be sacked behind the line. Another Coffeyville drive will stall out. Another hopeful drive. Again, like you said, just stalls out after that uh, sack. And uh, here comes uh, Seagraves again, once again, to put the ball away. Yeah, Seagraves had himself a heck of a week last week against Garden City. Not just because of pure volume, but because of his yardage as well. And when you really take a look at how many punts we had in that game, we had about 15, 16, give or take, between Seagraves and Garden City's Joe Carroll. I think Seagraves had a 20-yard average advantage yeah, over was- Carroll in that game. Very much it was Seagraves with a very good performance. Yeah, he was averaging about 40 a punt. This punt's going to be away. Going to be a solid one here. Fair catch at about the 19-yard line. And so that is where the Independence Pirates will set up here. So another drive upcoming here. Of course, Independence, their only score of the day, a 26-yard touchdown pass from Brock Doman to Deontay Wilson right up the middle of the field. That is really your only score so far here today. 6 nothing Pirates, 48.4 seconds remaining in this first quarter. So once again, Doman sets up. Looks like it's going to be pistol formation here on first down. Three wide receiver set. you got two to the left and one to the right. Again, back in the backfield, that's going to be Pat Bowen. Hand off here. Bowen going to have a whole lot of room to go. Immediately into the secondary. This one's going to be huge. Going to the sideline here. Eventually pushed out about the 50-yard line. Somewhere in the area. It's going to be a gain of about 30 yards here on first down and 10. Yeah, shoved him out at the, tw- uh, at the 48. They're going to give him a 27, uh, 28-yard carry on there. And he just he just went right through the middle and had nobody touch him and went to the right side. Yeah, virtually untouched through the defensive line and the second line as well. But here's a pass that's going to be almost picked off. Wow. Jacob Prochet was just about a couple inches from putting his hands on that one, but instead it's going to fall incomplete, and they'll be a very, very lucky second down and 10 here for Independence. That looked to be a design play. Almost gave that one no thought, just kind of threw that one over there. And Doman really lucky that one not taken away. Yeah, uh, because if Prochet catches that, he may go for six the other direction. That is the route that that happens on, more than any other route. 
He'll toss over to the left-hand side. But Doman again, back to pass here on second down and 10. Can have a man on the slant across the middle. That one's going to be caught. Willie Brantley, again, your leading receiver. But he's going to fumble the football, and Cottonville's recovered it. The pass was caught across the middle of the field, and the referees are actually going to get together and talk about this one. Okay. But the initial indication is the fumble. I actually had a flag, but the penalty will be declined. It was a false start on the offense, and so it will be first down and 10 for the Coffeyville Red Ravens, recovering the fumble. You know, the initial play wasn't very good. You give up the catch across the middle to Willie Brantley, but you swarm the football, you pop it out, and you back on offense right about your own 20-yard line. Absolutely. So good job by the defense. Even though they allowed the catch, they were able to f force a turnover and uh, get the ball back into their offense's hands. And so, once again, we'll see the Coffeyville offense still only trailing by six, but this could be the last play of the first quarter, just 16.4 seconds remaining. It's going to be eye formation here, one wide receiver to the right. Harve under center. Four down linemen for the Pirates, but a couple linebackers also threatening the blitz as well. Harve going to hand it off here on first down. Moving forward to about the 24 or so. Looks like that was Courtney Jackson on the carry this time round. First action he's seen today. He'll get himself about five yards to the 25-yard line, and that'll be the first quarter of play. So... After the first 15 minutes, just a six-point ball game. Coffeyville trailing the Independence Pirates six to nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Red Ravens football. US 98.1 KUSN. Yep. And welcome back. Here we're going to have some technical difficulties, so we'll actually. Just keep it with you here as we go ahead and move into our second quarter of play. Again, 6 to nothing. our score. Coffeyville currently trailing the Independence Pirates in a Montgomery County showdown. Again, Independence 4-2, and two, Coffeyville 3-3. Three and three. Coffeyville trying to finish their season above 500. But Independence trying to do much of the same, trying to make their record 5-2, and two, trying to keep themselves in the upper echelon of the Jayhawk Conference standings. Why don't we take a look at that before we move off to our second quarter. Of course, your number one team in the nation, Hutchinson, they're still undefeated on the year, 6-0 and and 7-0 and overall. Garden City, 5-1 and and 6-1. and Independence, and you've got Independence in third at 4-2, and both conference and overall. Coffeyville sitting right about in the middle of the conference at the moment, 3-2. and And you got Butler, 2-3, and Highland, 1-5, and Dodge City, 0-5. And, and then, of course, Fort Scott, who canceled their season earlier this year, they are sitting at 0-3. So tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and fire off a 30-second break. We'll come back. The second quarter. You're listening to Red Ravens Football, US 98.1 KUSN. Are you ready to move forward? Spring and summer enrollment at Coffeyville Community College is now open. Whether you're looking to complete an associate's degree, technical program, or certificate, CCC can assist in your educational journey. And CCC fits your schedule with face-to-face -face classes and online educational options. Contact the Student Success Center at studentsuccess at coffeeville.edu to schedule an appointment with an advisor. And once again, welcome back here to Veterans at Memorial Stadium. Connor Harbutt here with you on the call today. US 98.1 KUSN, joined by my partner Kyle High. First quarter in the books, still a 6 nothing ball game. Coffeyville trailing the Independence Pirates. Or if you take a look here, both teams, well, about the same amount of rushing yards. It's really the passing game that's been the difference here in this one. Independence 113 passing yards to just 20 for the Red Ravens. Second down and five here. Coffeyville is going to drop back to pass. That's going to be a pass over to the left-hand side. Is it going to be caught? Yes, it is. Another catch here for Cortarius Wilson, and that'll be a gain of about, at the end of the day, I think that's a gain of about, I can't do math, Kyle. That's going to be about 11 yards. There. 11 yards. So, they'll set up a new set of downs here. First down and 10 on another reception here for Cortarius Wilson. Good job by Wilson, just tow, um, basically towing the line there on the uh, left side. Nobody was there near him, so he had plenty of time to catch the ball. Second time he's done that here today. He actually pretty much has every reception for Coffeyville here today. The only other receiver to catch a pass, that would be Star Thomas for a loss of one yard. But a new set of downs, first down and 10, ball on the 36-yard line. Arve going to pitch out to the right. Going to be Courtney Jackson on the carry. Going to have a flag. 
thrown at about the 36. So might have a holding up coming here on Coffeyville to negate what was the gain of about two or three. Yeah, these uh, if this is another holding penalty, these penalties are just killing the Coffeyville uh, defense or the uh, Coffeyville offense. Yeah, first drive of the day had a little bit of trouble getting the play to go in the first place. But it will be a penalty here on Coffeyville. Be a 10-yard penalty. Excuse me, no, actually going to put them all the way back to the 21-yard line. It's so actually quite the massive penalty instead. Going to be a 15-yarder to about the 21. So instead of first down and 10, you've now got first down and 25. Quite the killer penalty there, Kyle. Yep, it's, uh, that's definitely not good, that's for sure. So we'll see what Caulfield has cooking here. You still need to get to about the 41-yard line. And as it stands, you're on your own 21. Again, eye formation here for Arve. Courtney Jackson back in the backfield. Arve back to pass here on first down, looking to his left. Going to find Jackson about the 20-yard line. Moving forward, going to find quite a bit here, or a little bit. About five or six, a good place to start. You eventually get down to about the 28-yard line. Tried to set up a little screen there and get his def- get his uh, defenders in front of him. Uh, not too much, but uh, you got to chisel away little by little. Yeah, I'll move it to about second down and 19. You know, you find a couple more at the first down. You're definitely going to need a little bit something more, but you got to find positive momentum somewhere. you got to get those positive yards. You can't really be looking at a second and 25, a third and 25, that sort of thing. That's when the trouble really starts to begin. But it is still second down and long. It'll be pistol formation here. Arve going to drop back to pass again here on second down. Going to have to roll out of the pocket. Able to narrowly avoid the sack here, but still having to try to find a man. And make a dangerous pass over to Isaiah Taylor, but it's just thrown out of bounds instead. It'll fall incomplete. And now you'll have your third down and 19. Arve did a good job avoiding the pressure. He was able to spin away from one tackle, but there was just too many guys on him. And he just tr- tried to make a play down the field. Luckily, it uh, fell harmlessly out of bounds. Uh, that he... Uh, it's a good thing he didn't get intercepted, but now I've got a uh, third down and a really long way to go here to try to pick up this first down. Yeah, definitely going to have to pretty much put it somewhere near the first down line. The Currently the 46-yard line. Buck going to line up under center here with one wide receiver to each side. Going to send Wilson in motion over towards his left. Arve going to drop back to pass. Instead, going to hand it off here to Jackson. Jackson going to be sent backwards. Almost runs right back into Arve. This play just going to be busted in every sense of the word. Jackson just trying to find anything. He's eventually going to fall all the way back at the nine-yard line for a loss of 19. As I'll tell you what, third down and 19, I don't know if I necessarily agree with running it up the middle. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, it looked like they were just trying to gain a few extra yards there. At some point, I think if you're Courtney Jackson, you... You have to throw the football. Just throw it down the field somewhere, anywhere. Yeah, so that's going to be about a fourth and 38 to go. Las Vegas. Actually put it about the 10-yard line to make that fourth and 36 instead. But instead of maybe punting it around your 20-yard line, you're going to be punting from the back of your own end zone as we see Skylar Seagraves on for the third time today. Fourth time today, excuse me. As Coffeyville still just struggling on offense. A continuation of last week. Punt is away. Going to be another good one. A bit of a line drive kick here. Going to get a favorable bounce. Going to bounce somewhere into Independence territory. They'll eventually pick it up at about the 41. And so that's where we'll see this Independence Pirates offense back out onto the field. So other than that first drive for the Pirates, they've struggled just as much. Or at least they've had the opportunity... But they just haven't been able to put points up on the board in their own right. Yeah, after that uh, first touchdown, the both offenses have struggled pretty much. Uh, after that 48-yard punt by Seagraves, great punt there to kind of turn the field there a little bit. But, yeah, the offenses have kind of gone quiet ever since that touchdown by Independence early on as they lead uh, right now 6-0. to zero. Yeah, 6 to nothing here. 12 minutes remaining in this first half. It's going to be Doman lining up here in pistol formation to start things off. Two backs in the backfield. Three wide receivers set. You got two to the right and one to the left. Don't we going to take the snap? It'll be a handoff here to Bowen on first down. Nowhere to go. Going to be swung around and roped down about a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. Good job by the defense just swarming in. Basically, the minute he got hold of the football, he got hit uh, for that two-yard loss. So the defense uh, still uh, doing a really good job right here so far. 
Yeah, so that'll set up second down in about 12. Caulfield going with some defensive adjustments here, defensive personnel changes. Three or four players running in after that play. So a bit of a new look here. So you're going to go three down linemen, four linebackers. It still looks to be about three linebackers, but plenty of defensive backs. Brock Doman going to have some room to run. He's just going to drop the ball, and he'll take it forward for about 14 or 15. As Well, you don't send but three on the defensive line there. That's going to open the field up a little bit for your quarterback to run as Doman finds himself a new set of downs. First down and 10 upcoming into Coffeville territory. Ball at about the 48. So, new set announced. First down and 10. Ball at the 48. Under 11 minutes to go in this first half. Doman, five wide receivers. Going to drop back to pass. That ball's going to be caught. Still on his feet. About the 25-yard line. That's going to be Deontay Wilson. He's had himself a game thus far. And eventually, he's going to be pushed out inside the Coffeyville red zone. About the 18-yard line. So, make that a gain of about 30 on the play. As the Independence passing game just continues to give Coffeyville fits. It hasn't translated into points. They've had several big plays early on in this contest. Yeah, I mean, like I said, they're just giving them fits out there. And now, just as we said, the, the uh, offenses were uh, not moving. All of a sudden, Independence gets going. And we've certainly seen them move the ball, like I said, Kyle. It's just a matter of getting the points. That's been the struggle for the Pirates. But either way, Doman back to pass once again, rolling out of his pocket to the right-hand side. Going to find a man on the sideline here, but I don't know if he's able to bring that ball in bounds, and he was not. So, there'll be an incomplete pass set up second down and ten. Intended receiver on the play. That looks like it was Almont Smith. Couldn't bring that one in. So second down and 10. 10 minutes, 18 seconds left to play here in this first half. Again, Independence just outside the red zone. About the 20 and a half yard line here. will be the pistol formation once again. Doman takes a snap, hands it off here to Bowen on second down. Going to fight forward, but looks like he's brought down here by Coffeyville's Devin Lee. After a gain of a couple, he'll set up a third down here. Third down, about eight to go. Be a huge deal here if Coffeyville can maybe prevent Independence from finding the end zone here. Maybe a field goal. Makes it a two-possession ball game, but... Keeps it within man. It kind of keeps it manageable here well, early on. Yeah, I mean, uh, giving up a field goal is a lot better than giving up the TD here. Um, uh, yeah, and you could also yeah. get a block because they did block the extra point earlier on, so they could block the field goal if there is an attempt here. Yeah, but of course you got to get through this third and eight first. It's going to be shotgun formation. Doman back to pass, looking over towards his left. Has the out. It's going to be caught. Going to be caught at about the eight yard line. And that will will. Kind of forget everything we just said here. It's now going to be first down and goal. On the carriage, on the coverage out there, it looks like it was Tate Jackson. It looks like he just kind of fell down on the route. Trying to get back to the trying to get back to the throw. So instead of uh, maybe a four down and eight, you've got yourselves first down, seven yards to go. Coffee gonna to have to look to make a goal line stand here. And they did that last week it's Garden City, but they're gonna have to do it again here. Doman on here on first down, going to hand it off to Bowen. Bowen going to get to about the five-yard line. Ball's going to pop it out, but play is going to be whistled dead here. Perhaps for the benefit of the Coffeyville Red Ravens, is that ball actually picked up here by the center for Independence. Ball picked up by Kamuda Lavasa. Took it into the end zone, but they're going to rule the play dead. So it'll set up second down now in seven. Would you see him lower his shoulder after he picked up the football? I would not want to be hit by that guy. He certainly wanted to play that one out there. In fact, I think one of his other linemen were celebrating with him after he was in the end zone. Yeah, they certainly wanted that one here, but instead they're going to have second down and seven. A couple of players coming in on both sides here for Coffeyville. You see out onto the field, Brennan Scott. So once again, Coffeyville tries to make themselves a goal line stand. Only going to drop back the pass here on second down, looking over towards his left. Going to roll out of the pocket, still looking for a man. He's going to run into some trouble. He's going to be sacked at about the 17-yard line. Be a huge loss here on second down, and now you'll have yourselves third down and goal from about the 17. As Coffeyville once again gets themselves into the backfield. Absolutely. Again, they're making that goal line stance like we uh, were talking about earlier. Loss of 12 there, so a huge loss. Uh, for uh, uh, the Coffeyville defense. Uh, it's now going to be third and uh, about 17 yards to go. 
Second sack of the day here for Coffeyville. And again, it does lead to third down and 17. Of course, six to nothing. Coffeyville still trailing by six. Independence looking to make it two scores on the day. Going back to pass here on third down. Having to find a target. Going to just drop that one in, but it'll be well short of the goal line. It's like on the catch that was Willie Brantley. Bring that one in at about the seven yard line. And so with a fourth down and goal, looks like we'll see our first field goal attempt of the day. Is on to attempt the PA, not the PAT, excuse me, on to attempt the field goal is Wilson Yee. Again, we were talking about earlier how we usually don't see kickers wearing 60s. Uh, and so it's pretty interesting to see that. Going to be about a 25 yard attempt. Here for Yi. Snap is good. Kick is away, and it is going to be through the uprights. So, 6.51 remaining here in this first half. Independence take themselves a two-score lead. They now lead this one over Coffeyville 9 to nothing. We'll be back in about a minute. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Red Ravens Football, US 98.1, KUSN. Ralph, did you pay an electric bill? Yes, Donna. I paid it using Community State Bank's online bill You payment. know, you can save a lot of time using online bill pay from Community State Bank. Yes, Donna. I know. And it's really easy. It's really easy. easy, too. Just log in to our Community State Bank account. And sign up for Community State Bank's online and bill pay. And sign payment. up for online bill pay. Yes, Donna. We can do that for all of our and bills. And you can do that for all of our bills. Yes, Donna. Community State Bank is almost as smart as you are. Well, thank you, Ralph. Glad I could help. I love you, Ralph. Community State Bank. Member FDIC. I love you too, Donna. I'm the adult beverage you could have had. But they just didn't have what you were looking for. That won't happen when you shop Gillen's Retail Liquor in Coffeyville. That's because Gillen's carries the widest selection in the area. But on the unlikely chance they don't have what you're looking for, just let them know and they'll promptly order it for you. Gillen's Retail Liquor at 1713 West 8th Street with the largest, coldest cooler in the area and fast, friendly service you can count on. You'll never go home empty-handed at Gillum Retail Liquor. Welcome back here to Veterans Memorial Stadium. Following the field goal, now 9 to nothing in favor of Independence. Coffeyville trailing this one. But back to receive once again, it is going to be Taven Jackson and Dorian Lewis. Connor Harbin here on the call, US 98.1 KUSN. Joining alongside me is Kyle High. Another great kick here for ye. This one going to be filled, though, in front of the end zone at about the five-yard line. It's going to be Jackson once again on the return. Going to move this one up the middle of the field. Actually, a great return here for Taven Jackson. He's got some room to go. Going to get across half the field. Finally going to be caught from behind. At about the 41-yard line. So, huge return there for Taven Jackson. Going to give Coffeyville great field position. Hasn't been a problem for field position today for Coffeyville. Just been moving the football once they get the field position. Yeah, again, they got to get moving once they get that field position. A 54-yard return for Taven Jackson. Uh, so, a great way to start here. You're in the Independence territory, but you got to move the football and get in the end zone here. And we'll see if Nick Arve and the rest of this Coffeyville offense can get things going here today. Like I was talking about earlier, they've had moments where they've been able to get eight or nine yards. It's just a matter of putting it together at this point, putting together a few of those so you can maybe even get into field goal range, something that they just haven't been able to do. I think we've seen them once in field goal range and then promptly got pushed right back out. So hopefully we can see that kind of change here as Arve lines up in shotgun formation on first down. Star Thomas the backfield. It's going to be kept by Arve here. Might have been a misread as he's going to be immediately brought down, though, for a loss of about three or four yards on the quarterback option. Not the way you want to start the drive here as uh, get on that three-yard loss. So it'll be about a three-yard loss. Set up second down and 13 to go. Ball now placed on the 45-yard line. Again, just over six minutes left to go in this first half. We open up our scoring with a 26-yard touchdown pass. Brock Doman finding Deontay Wilson across the middle of the field. And, of course, a 28-yard field goal or so from Wilson Yee just a moment ago to make this a 9 nothing ball game. But, again, it's going to be shotgun formation. Three wide receivers set. Got two to the left and one to the right. Arve going to drop back to pass. Slant route across the middle. Going to be caught here by Wilson. Still on his feet, but eventually roped down about the 40-yard line. Be a short gain of about mm, short gain of about five yards. And that will bring us to third down and eight. Cortarius Wilson's uh, definitely been the uh, kind of like the – 
Uh, the, He's been the workhorse. Yeah, pretty much. I was, I was trying to think of the uh, the comfort uh, guy that's, that he's been slinging it to. Um, but, again, now third down and man, about eight yards to go here. You can't throw away this field position. They really haven't been able to find it much else other than Wilson. Credit to Wilson for getting open. But just the rest of the passing game hasn't really opened up the way Coffeyville really wants it to here today. But it is going to be third down and about eight to go. Arve trying to roll out to his right, runs right into a defender. He had no chance there. His offensive lineman just lost. collapsed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just collapsed, and he had nowhere to go. And so another quarterback sack here for Independence. I believe that's going to be their second sack of the day. And so it'll be fourth down once again, fourth down and about Fourth and about 18 here. Yeah, I was trying to do the math in my head. Like I said, Kyle, and like I'll say numerous times throughout the course of this game, math really isn't my strong suit. Counting isn't my strong suit. Whoa. Fourth and 17, ball on the 49-yard line. We'll see Skylar Seagraves once again for his fifth punt here my, today. Mine's not great either. Luckily, the computer does the work for us. So, <laughs> so Seagraves once again on to kick away. His last punt, 48 yards. Snap is good. Another punt away. This one, again, going to be a solid punt. This one going to bounce about the 15. Bad bounce, but they're able to keep it in, and I think that ball's going to be placed at about the one-yard line. What a kick, and what a save to keep it at the one-yard line. Yeah, that ball going to be saved just before the goal line by Tyler Mullins. He's able to throw that one back in there, and I believe that was Prochet. And hold on. Still waiting to see where they spot this one, so hold off on that, because we do have a flag back at about the 49. So hold your horses. Certainly a great effort. Yeah, if this is if, a foul, if this is a penalty on Independence, it's not going to be probably not going to be enough for a first down. You take this kick. Yeah, I think you might want to take the kick because I don't think you get a better result than putting the ball at the one yard line. Unless it results in an automatic first down for the offense, then yeah, go back out there. That could be also true. We'll just kind of have to wait and see. Still no indication from our referees crew here today. Thought we might be talking about whether that was actually a touchback or not, but no, it is definitely about this flag. Oh, it's going to be a false start on Coffeyville, so that's going to negate that. And you're going to have to re-kick now from the... You're going to have to re-kick from the... I believe that'll push you back now to the 46-yard line. You saw this kind of against Garden City. Every time Coffeyville makes a good play, it seemingly has a flag attached. Obviously, the interception last week, and I know it's not really the play you say, well, that's a game-changer, but... Could have had independence at your one yard line. Yeah. Instead, now you're going to make Sk- Seagraves punt this one away again. Could have a different result. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we just hope it's not a different result. We want to pin it back to the one again. Would be impressive if you could do it twice in a row here. But Seagraves is on to punt this one away. Again, ball at the 46 yard line is a fourth and 22. Play clock at about five seconds. Now going to kick this one away. Going to be another solid punt. Going to put a lot of power on this one. This one's going to be caught about the two-yard line. He's actually going to be brought down again. No, still on his feet. Not able to bring him down. Nope, going to be brought down finally by a host of Red Ravens at the three-yard line. So tell you what, everything's all said and done. It's about the the one-yard line, but I think you'll take the three. As uh, once again, the special teams unit comes up big on another coverage there. So Independent's going to start at about their four-yard line, actually. Looks like that'll be the spot. Uh, three and a half minutes left to go here in this first half. Again, uh, uh, Seagrave was just showing his foot here. That was a 53-yard punt and just the two-yard return uh, by uh, Johnson. And now um, if you're if you're Coffeyville defense here, uh, maybe you're smell, smelling a little blood in the water here and try to maybe get some points on your uh, on the board for your team. Yeah, definitely. We'll have to see what Independence has cooking here, pushed up against their own goal line. It looks like it's going to be pistol formation. Pat Bowen in the backfield. Doman, of course, still your quarterback here today. Here's the handoff on first down. Bowen going to be hit right as he takes the football and actually going to be a loss here on first down. So, he creep ever closer to the goal line. Yeah, show him best. Pat Bowen pushes forward for a couple yards here, and I believe I missed who made the tackle there, but you actually do lose a yard on the play. It's going to be second down now and 11, ball on the three.
Second down upcoming. Brown again going to take the handoff. And again, he's not going to find much room. And again, he's going to move farther back, ever closer to the goal line. Still not there. But now we've got ourselves second down, and it looks to be another loss of one on the play. So make that second down and 12. That initial hit, he would have, and they would have, and if they could have brought him down there, that would have been almost a safety. And again, like you said, they keep moving it backwards here. The Caulfield defense just kind of pinning their ears back here because they know what's coming. Yeah, so it is going to be third down and 12. Going to move in the shotgun formation. Might have had ourselves in offsides there. Going to chuck this one up. Might just be a dead play, but no, it's going to be caught instead. I'll tell you what, you make two great plays and then you kind of lose control there. But that ball's going to be caught around the sideline. I believe we're going to have an offsides penalty against Coffeyville, but this one might be declined. As you actually did gain about 29 yards on the catch. Just, uh, he, they, the, off, the receiver got behind the defensive back and just, you know, it was just wide open. So a 29-yard gain, going to set up first down in 10. Ball on the Independence 31-yard line. Now, instead of maybe focusing on getting the ball in great field position, Caulfield's got to worry about maybe not giving up the score before the half. Two and a half minutes remaining in this half. Independence with all three of their timeouts. Stoneman going to take the snap here. Shotgun formation. Brushed out of the pocket. However, still able to find a man at about the 37-yard line. And again, is going to be Deontay Wilson on the catch. It'll be a pickup here of about seven or eight to set up second down. Ran a great route there and was able to get out there near the first down after a pickup of about eight yards. So a gain of eight sets up second down and two. Ball now on the 39-yard line. Needs to get to the 41 to move the chains. Now under two minutes left to go, but again, Coffeyville or Independence, excuse me. Remember, the Pirates have all three of their timeouts. Doman again back to pass. Going to throw a route across the middle once again. Again going to be caught. That will be Brantley on the reception this time as we find our way into Coffeyville territory. Tackled about the 49-yard line. Another route ran across the middle. Another catch. Another new set of downs for Independence. Pick up a 10 and uh, just uh, slowly moving the ball down the field as we have about 90 seconds remaining here in the first half of play as we have changes being made here. Yeah, Caulfield trying to make some wholesale changes here before this first down and 10. Can you be able to get everybody on and off, though? See Jacob Prochet back out onto the field alongside Zeke Zaquan Frazier. It's a handoff on first down. Moving through to about the to be about the 47 yard line on the carry that was I believe that was Geon Smith first time he's seen some action here today and that'll lead us to our first time out with a minute four remaining so a minute four remaining here in this first half we'll go ahead and take ourselves a quick break still nine to nothing in favor of the Independence Pirates you're listening to Caulfield Red Raven football US 98.1 QSN <laughs> Windsor Place has many residents who kept busy after retirement by staying involved in the community. Residents don't have to leave their active lifestyles behind when they come to Windsor Place. In fact, we encourage our residents to stay engaged in their favorite activities and to maintain hobbies and friendships in the community. For residents that can no longer venture out for activities, we keep a full schedule of entertainment, classes, games, crafts, and more. For more information, call 620-252-4929. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture, Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin in Butler, Missouri. We're back. And welcome back here to Veterans Memorial Stadium here in Coffeyville, Kansas. A minute four remaining coming off of Independence's first time out. Still have two remaining here. Ball is going to be at the 47-yard line or so. First and second down and eight, excuse me. Coffeyville looking to prevent any more points heading into the half. So it will be shotgun formation here for Brock Doman. Dropping back to pass, going to take about a three-step drop. Now going to roll out to his left, just going to fall on this one. It'll be a quarterback sack, and kind of. 
as he just kind of fell to the ground there, and that'll lead us to another timeout. It's like on the rush. That was going to be Alan Henry. So, and will lead us to another timeout here. Third down and eight upcoming, 54 seconds remaining. We'll take another break. You're listening to Caulfield Red Ravens football, US 98.1, Kate Wissen. Hello, Al Perky here, Perky's Used Cars. Are you looking for a good used car or pickup at an affordable price? Well, if so, we'd love to have a chance to help you out. Same location, same phone number since 1969. We're here to stay. Our current inventory is on our website at perkysusedcars.com. Plus, we have vehicles arriving daily. Every car sold comes with our 30-day limited warranty. Before you buy, give us a shot. We're located a half a mile west of Buckeye on 1200 Road, southwest of Coffeyville. PerkysUseCars.com. And again, back here at Veterans Memorial Stadium after the second time out of the half for the Independence Pirates. They'll have one remaining, 54 seconds remaining, 9 to nothing. Our score, Independence leads over Coffeyville, 9 to nothing. Connor Harbin here on the call, US 98.1 at KUSN. Joining alongside me is Kyle High here today. Ball's going to be about the 50-yard line after the previous quarterback sack. Again, I believe Alan Henry credited with that one. Just the man in the area, if anything. As Doman again draws back to pass here on third down. Looking across the middle of the field, just going to chuck this one up. Actually has a man who will make the catch. Still on his feet, loses control of the football, but it's immediately picked up by another man down there for Independence. And they're going to get a whole bunch of yards here as that ball eventually picked up. That was actually uh, Malik Mullins who recovered the fumble. But on the catch, that was Almont Smith. And now Independence going to have the ball just inside the red zone. Ball at the 19-yard line, 39 seconds remaining. That is about the last thing you wanted if you're Coffeyville. Because now, instead of maybe thinking, okay, well, maybe we can just keep them around midfield and keep this just a nine-point ball game, now you really have to worry. Because you're going to have one timeout. You're going to have 39 seconds for Independence to do something with this ball. Before we get this first down and 10 from the 19, though, we are going to have ourselves a brief meeting of the minds here between our referees crew here today. That ball definitely did pop out. Well, it looks so like, it, looks like it is still going to stay first down and 10 yeah, at the 19. Like Looks like whatever they were talking about, they there's a degree. now we have a disagreement. So as the teams are walking off the field, I think we have a timeout. So we're actually going to have ourselves a timeout here taken by Coffeyville. So a timeout taken by Coffeyville as we reset the clock to about 41 seconds. We're going to take a timeout right alongside them. Maybe we can get some clarification here in a little bit. But back in a moment, you're listening to Red Ravens Football, US 98.1, KUSN. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle? Or even a boat? Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeyville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies, so they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeyville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. Again, back from the Coffeyville timeout, their first timeout of the half. It's going to be first down and 10, ball on the 19-yard line. So the play still stands, but Coffeyville did take the timeout. Now have to make themselves another red zone stop here. Doman back to pass here on first down and 10. Flushed out of the pocket, rolling over to his right. Going to be eventually roped down and dropped at about the 33-yard line. A quarterback sack, and who else but Alan Henry once again. Getting back there, I believe, and I have to confirm that. Earlier one was a sack, but that would be his third and his second sack of the day. Excuse me, he's having himself quite the game thus far. And we have a timeout taken by Independence, which is their final of yeah. the uh, first half. That'll be the final timeout taken by Independence. You're right, Kyle. So we'll go ahead and take another timeout right alongside them. 32.8 seconds, but a second 22 when we come back. You listen to Red Ravens Football, US 98.1. Key with At CRMC Medical Group, our primary care physicians and providers focus on ways to keep you and your family in good health, as well as care for them when they're not. Our family medicine and women's health physicians are accepting new patients. We have convenient office locations in Coffeyville and Independence with extended and Saturday hours in Coffeyville. 
Pikeville. If you need a physician or need to make an appointment, please call 620-688-6566. That's 620-688-6566. Thirty-two point eight seconds remaining. A big quarterback sack there for Allen Henry. Makes it a second down and twenty-one. Ball now at the thirty-yard line. It's Connor Harbin here with you. US ninety-eight point one at KUSN. Coffield trying to prevent Independence from picking up any points before the half here. Trying to keep this just a nine-point game. It's Doman back to pass here now on second down. Going to dump it off here. That's going to be caught by Bowen. Bowen with some room to run. We are going to have a flag on the play. Going to take it to about the two-yard line, but we'll have to see what this flag is. Because I think this one might be coming back here. Yeah, I think, the flag was thrown about the 18-yard line. Yeah, you got to think this is holding downfield by one of the receivers. Yeah, it's definitely thrown in that general vicinity. So, got to figure maybe this one's coming back. Wow, so they said no no, no flag, and so the play is going to stand, and that's going to be a gain of 29, and that will put the ball on the one-yard line here for Independence. Yeah, 29-yard pickup. Just a simple little dump pass off the bow, and that one's caught and just had so much room to run, and now we're going to have ourselves a spike to stop that clock. Let Independence take their time, maybe figure out something. So we're going to have technically a second down and goal upcoming, but Independence just needing one more yard. To find themselves the end zone. Pick themselves up some more points. So, yeah, it looked like they may have been holding downfield, and they just changed their mind, said, no, no, pa no penalty, let's move it down to the one-yard line. The Doman in pistol formation here. Again, like you said, ball on the one-yard line. It's going to be second down after they spike that football to stop the clock. No timeouts left for Andy. Yeah, exactly, no timeouts. So... That might make up something here. There's going to be a bad snap. Doman going to be dropped at about the 14-yard line. So mistake here for Independence. They're going to lose about 13, and they're going to have to hurry up. They're going to have to spike this football. They'll get to the line of scrimmage quickly. They'll spike that one. It'll be fourth down and goal. With 3.9 seconds remaining, they might just send on the kicking unit here. And so that will drastically change things here. Coffeeville maybe wanted to prevent a touchdown. Well, might have done that through a costly mistake by Independence. Snap right over the head of the quarterback, Doman. So Wilson Yee on to attempt the field goal. This one's going to be about a 34-yarder. Excuse me, maybe a little bit less than that. Either way, kick is up, and it is going to be good. So the second field goal today for Wilson Yee. Right as the clock expires, it'll be a 12 nothing lead for the Independence Pirates as we head into the halftime break. So we'll go ahead and take a nice break ourselves. We'll come back, kind of gather some stats for you, kind of get our heads in order. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about this first half, how we've gotten to the point where we are here today. So we'll be back here in about, let's make this one a four-minute break, Kyle. Huh? We'll back in four minutes. You're listening to Red Ravens Football, U.S. 98.1, Kate Wissan. Over the past 20 years, many kind words have been used to describe Windsor Place, the services we provide to seniors, as well as the people who work for us. There is one word in particular that we've come to cherish. That word is unique. Maybe that's because the word unique so perfectly describes everything we do, everything we are, and everything we strive to be. If you would like to know more about what makes Windsor Place unique, we invite you to call 620-252-4929. There's a lot going on in the world right now. At H&R Block, we want you to focus on your business while we handle your books. From payroll and bookkeeping to expert tax preparation and advice, we are ready to put our expertise to work on your small business or personal tax needs. For the year-round services you need and the one-on-one -on -one attention you deserve, partner with H&R Block Business Services. Stop by our offices at 502 West 12th in Coffeyville or 101 East Main in Independence. $1,600 rebate or payments as low as $99 a month for a new Lennox heating and cooling system. Does that sound too good to be true? Well, not at least cooling and heating in Independence, where we offer reliable, groundbreaking, award-winning Lennox products that keeps your air perfect to make you more relaxed and energized. Call Lee's Cooling and Heating at 620-331-2310 for great products, great savings, and perfect air from Lennox. Lennox. 
It's that time of year when the weather can change quickly, sometimes violently. Stay up to date with all the weather's changes and stay in the know when severe weather is threatening. Severe weather coverage is brought to you by Eck Heat and Air and H&H Roofing. So when severe weather threatens, stay in the know by staying tuned to KUSN. Everyone looks forward to a good meal. That's why we do dining differently at Windsor Place. We call it 7 to 7 Dining. Residents can come to the dining room anytime between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. for a home-cooked meal of their choice. Three specials are available throughout the day, along with a full menu, including all-day breakfast. If residents need a treat between meals, they can visit our self-service snack pantries. Come see what makes Windsor Place different at mealtime. Call 620-252-4929. Are you ready to move forward? Spring and summer enrollment at Coffeyville Community College is now open. Whether you're looking to complete an associate's degree, technical program, or certificate, CCC can assist in your educational journey. And CCC fits your schedule with face-to-face -face classes and online educational options. Contact the Student Success Center at studentsuccess at coffeyville.edu to schedule an appointment with an advisor. Did you pay the electric bill? Yes, Donna. I paid it using Community State Bank's online bill you pay. You know, you can save a lot of time using online bill pay from Community State Bank. Yes, Donna. I know. And it's really easy. It's really easy. easy, too. Just log into our Community State Bank account. And sign up for Community State Bank's online and bill pay. And sign up for online bill pay. Yes, Donna. We can do that for all of our and bills. And you can do that for all of our bills. Yes, Donna. Community State State Bank is almost as smart as you are. Well, thank you, Ralph. Glad I could help. I love you, Ralph. Community State Bank. Member FDIC. I love you too, Donna. I'm the adult beverage you could have had. But they just didn't have what you were looking for. That won't happen when you shop Gillen's Retail Liquor in Coffeeville. That's because Gillen's carries the widest selection in the area. But on the unlikely chance they don't have what you're looking for, just let them know and they'll promptly order it for you. Gillen's Retail Liquor at 1713 West 8th Street with the largest, coldest cooler in the area and fast, friendly service you can count on. You'll never go home empty-handed at Gillen Retail Liquor. Windsor Place has many residents who kept busy after retirement by staying involved in the community. Residents don't have to leave their active lifestyles behind when they come to Windsor Place. In fact, we encourage our residents to stay engaged in their favorite activities and to maintain hobbies and friendships in the community. For residents that can no longer venture out for activities, we keep a full schedule of entertainment, classes, games, crafts, and more. For more information, call 620-252-4929. And welcome back to Veterans Memorial Stadium here in Coffeyville, Kansas. Halftime of today's Jayhawk Conference matchup. Today's Montgomery County show. yard touchdown pass we'll go over that in just a second 29 yards his longest pass of the day so it's not even like you can take a look and say well he had the really one long good pass 
and then it's just been kind of check downs and other kind of plays throughout the rest of the day. No, he's just been consistently torching this defense, and they really haven't had much of an answer. Of course, he has been sacked four times. So right. you're still pressuring him, but Independence just continues to torch you when they are able to get Doman some time to find uh, a pass downfield. Poor halves. But, of course, you take a look. Your running back for today, he has a couple of receptions for 32 yards, although most of that came on a 29-yard reception late in the second quarter. So Coffeyville, of course, Nick Arve, 6-9, 43 yards, 12 yards being the longest pass for him today. He's been sacked a couple of times as well. And uh, like we say, Quartarius Wilson, he's doing most of the damage throughout the air for Coffeyville. It's not too much, 40 receptions, 37 yards, but he's really been the one getting open today. Yeah, absolutely. As, uh, again, it's... it's um He's the only one that's been doing much for the offense uh, overall. Star Thomas had a huge run earlier on, but they haven't gone back to him. But, of course, the, the running – I think they overdo on on uh, running backs. Because sometimes you'll you'll see they'll go one one running back on one series and then another one on the next series. To me, that does not get a guy into a groove for the game. Uh, I think if, if you start off hot – Keep giving the guy the ball until he has, until he's not producing. You just, then you move on to the next guy because right now I just don't think that rotation is working right now for this Coffeyville offense. Yeah, Star Thomas three rushes for 29 yards, an average of 9.7 yards per carry. Isaiah Taylor, of course, wide receiver. He's got one one carry, I should say, for 10 yards. Dorian Lewis three carries for six, and then uh, it looks like actually no, excuse me, five yards. It's a weird way of putting things there on our quickie stats list. But either way, Courtney Jackson, he has got himself negative 13 yards here today on a couple of carries, including a long uh, loss earlier today. That loss uh, somewhere, I believe that was early in the second quarter, where it just seemed like the entire play was busted before it really could even get started here. But, of course, taking a look at the defensive side of the ball, you've allowed 292 yards, but you're in a manageable situation. Like we saw from against Garden City last week where – yeah, the offense was kind of stalling out here, but because of the defensive play, you're really giving yourself a chance to maybe kind of do something. You're really giving yourself a chance to maybe come back and win this game, and it really starts with the efforts of Jalen Schuler. He's got 45 or 4.5 four tackles here today. Excuse me. Uh, words are hard. Reese Collier, he's got four tackles. Alan Henry, three of or two of his three and a half tackles today. Those are coming from the quarterback sack. I guess they did give him that sack, even though uh, Doman more or less just kind of fell on him. But either way. Uh, Taven Jackson, three tackles uh, from the uh, secondary as well. So the defense still playing relatively well. Yeah, just have to short some things up. Exactly. Um, again, they're they're making stops when they need to, but they, uh, again, the their story is this offense got to help them out because the defense almost got a um, safety down here, but then they moved. Uh, Independence was able to move the ball pretty uh, well. This all got to get even going because if the offense doesn't move. Coffeyville really doesn't have a chance here. Yeah, got to protect against the big play, and then Coffeyville's offense, they certainly need some big plays as well. So take a look here at your scoring summary. Of course, first score of the game, 9-14 remaining in the first quarter. Deontay Wilson got the 26-yard touchdown pass from Brock Doman. Of course, the PAT attempt was blocked, but it kept it a 6 nothing score. And then, of course, saw two field goals in the second quarter. First one came with just under seven minutes to go. Wilson, he hit a 24-yard field goal. That made it 9 to nothing. And then, of course, he hit a 30-yard field goal right at the end of the first half to make it 12 to nothing. So we're going to go ahead and take ourselves another break. We'll take it another four-minute break. But when we come back, we'll have some more information for you. We'll talk some more things over. Don't go anywhere, though. You're listening to Red Ravens Football, US 98.1, KUSN. And welcome back. Actually, going to keep it right here. It seems we are having some technical difficulties. To tell you what, let's go over some more things that we were going to kind of maybe talk about when we came back. I was kind of wanting to talk mostly about the penalties. Coffeeville, only four penalties for 35 yards in that first half, but a couple of them very, very costly. It really started on the first drive with the delay of game. And then, of course, you all had to give a specific penalty in particular. My memory's kind of fuzzy. But either way, some of these penalties have been very costly here for Coffeeville today. 
Uh, yeah, it's uh, including a couple holding ones that have kind of set drives back. Uh, when uh, when the they would start moving the ball a little bit, then there'd be a holding. They would set a drive back. There was a uh, again start first and ten, and then they, then they got guess, some, some like penalty or something mm-hmm. that moved them back 15 yards, made it first and 25. And when you're having to go for 25 yards to get your first down, you're and your offense has not been moving the ball very well. You're not doing yourself any favors there. Yeah, so hopefully Coffeyville can really keep it in check, keep themselves to kind of a clean football game here. Once again, it's only 12 to nothing here in this one. So you're really going to want to keep yourself locked in here because only a couple scores are needed. You find a great play, you find a great drive, really. It's going to take more than just one play here unless, you know, obviously. But uh, it's going to take you a couple plays here to kind of string together. And then you do it again. And then you're on top. It doesn't really matter that you were out yarded or you were kind of outgained by over 200 yards in that first half. That's just- The first downs, because uh, that just kind of shows you how uh, uh, inefficient the Coffeyville defense has been, our offense has been uh, today. It's uh, again, uh, hopefully they can get something going. We have more sports for you coming up on our family of stations. We're only taking about a week break. And uh, while we've got some time here, I want to go ahead and remind you that we'll actually have Montgomery County baseball for you, American Legion baseball, starting up here on June the 1st. I'll be on the call for that one, getting to travel a little bit around Kansas, bringing you some baseball coverage. Of course, weren't able to bring you Caulfield Community College baseball this year because of kind of how the schedules worked out, didn't really couldn't find some room with football and baseball going on at the same time. But we're still going to bring you some form of baseball, our second season of following the Cardinals around. Uh, don't know what station will be on just yet, but I'm sure I'll let you know via our website, kggfradio.com. I know we'll be starting our season here in Barsville. So, Kyle, we ready to go here for our four-minute break? Yes, yeah, so let's see if we can uh, get this thing going here. <laughs> 12 nothing our score. Seven minutes until the second half begins. You'll listen to Red Ravens football, US 98.1 KUSN. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local derailed commodity flooring and furniture. Brazelton in Independence, Kansas and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. Hello, Al Perky here, Perky's Used Cars. Are you looking for a good used car or pickup at an affordable price? Well, so, we'd love to have a chance to help you out. Same location, same phone number, since 1969. We're here to stay. Our current inventory is on our website at perkysusedcars.com. Plus, we have vehicles arriving daily. Every car sold comes with our 30-day limited warranty. Before you buy, give us a shot. We're located a half a mile west of Buckeye on 1200 Road, southwest of Coffeyville. PerkysUseCars.com. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle? Or even a boat? Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeyville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies, so they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeyville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. 
At CRMC Medical Group, our primary care physicians and providers focus on ways to keep you and your family in good health, as well as care for them when they're not. Our family medicine and women's health physicians are accepting new patients. We have convenient office locations in Coffeeville and Independence with extended and Saturday hours in Coffeeville. If you need a physician or need to make an appointment, please call 620-688-6566. That's 620-688-6566. Over the past 20 years, many kind words have been used to describe Windsor Place, the services we provide to seniors, as well as the people who work for us. There is one word in particular that we've come to cherish. That word is unique. Maybe that's because the word unique so perfectly describes everything we do, everything we are, and everything we strive to be. If you would like to know more about what makes Windsor Place unique, we invite you to call 620-252-4929. There's a lot going on in the world right now. At H&R Block, we want you to focus on your business while we handle your books. From payroll and bookkeeping to expert tax preparation and advice, we are ready to put our expertise to work on your small business or personal tax needs. For the year-round services you need and the one-on-one -on -one attention you deserve, partner with H&R Block Business Services. Stop by our offices at 502 West 12th in Coffeeville or 101 East Main in Independence. $1,600 rebate or payments as low as $99 a month for a new Lennox heating and cooling system. Does that sound too good to be true? Well, not at least cooling and heating in Independence, where we offer reliable, groundbreaking, award-winning Lennox products that keeps your air perfect to make you more relaxed and energized. Call Lee's Cooling and Heating at 620-331-2310 for great products, great savings, and perfect air from Lennox. It's that time of year when the weather can change quickly, sometimes violently. Stay up to date with all the weather's changes and stay in the know when severe weather is threatening. Severe weather coverage is brought to you by Eck Heat and Air and H&H &H Roofing. So when severe weather threatens, stay in the know by staying tuned to KUSN. Welcome back here to Veterans Memorial Stadium here in Coffeyville, Kansas. Just a couple minutes away from kicking off here in our second half of action. Coffeyville currently trailing the Independence Pirates 12 to nothing. Connor Harvard here with you here today on the play-by-play -play on US 98.1 KUSN. Of course, John alongside me is Kyle Hi. So we've got about two and a half minutes remaining, but before we start with our second half, just want to go ahead and remind you that there is one other game today in the Jayhawk Conference. Of course, uh, that would be Dodge City and Highland. Dodge City really currently taking it to Highland. They lead at the start of the second quarter. I don't know if that's maybe necessarily true or not, but either way, 37-8 to Dodge City over Highland. So I don't know if they scored 37 points in a quarter or not. Uh, that would be quite a bit, but... As it stands, it is 37-8 for Dodge City. Of course, yesterday we did have one other football game, and that would have been Garden City uh, over Butler 52-40, to in case you kind of missed that one. So Garden City once again claiming another victory. And what ended up being a pretty close game there uh, against a Butler Grizzly squad who has been kind of down this year. So. Yeah, this is actually their first losing season since 1997. So uh, a little bit down this year. But, again, it was a weird season as well. We're playing in the spring, for crying out loud. We're not playing in the fall like we usually do. So uh, it's, been, it's been a little different this season. But I think Butler, they'll come back strong pretty uh, pretty quickly, I think. Yeah, and of course, as I see here, that Dodge City Highland game is actually at halftime. So no 37 points in a single quarter. I'd like to see how you even accomplish that. But it is going to be a 29-point lead for the Conquistadors. Well, it works if it's arena football. At the half. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's an arena football thing. But either way, tell you what, Kyle, we're going to go ahead and take one final timeout. We're trying to catch up here on some ads. So we'll come back, have your second half on the way. You're listening to Red Raven Football, US 98.1 KUSN. Everyone looks forward to a good meal. That's why we do dining differently at Windsor Place. We call it 7 to 7 Dining. Residents can come to the dining room anytime between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. for a home-cooked meal of their choice. Three specials are available throughout the day, along with a full menu, including all-day breakfast. If residents need a treat between meals, they can visit our self-service snack pantries. Come see what makes Windsor Place different at mealtime. Call 620-252-4929. Are you ready to move forward? Spring and summer enrollment at Coffeyville Community College is now open. 
Whether you're looking to complete an associate's degree, technical program, or certificate, CCC can assist in your educational journey. And CCC fits your schedule with face-to-face -face classes and online educational options. Contact the Student Success Center at studentsuccess at coffeeville.edu to schedule an appointment with an advisor. And welcome back here to Veterans Memorial Stadium. It will be Coffeeville to kick off to start the second half. Independence back to receive. It looks like that is going to be, trying to get some numbers for you down there, it looks like one of them at least, that is going to be Deontay Wilson. The other still yet to turn around here, but you at least have Wilson back there to receive. Wilson having a very good game on the offensive side of the ball uh, would be kind of remiss to see if we kick it over towards him. But it is going to be Coffeyville to kick things away. Of course, 12 to nothing our score if you're just now joining us. Coffeyville unable to get anything going on the offensive side of the ball. They're going to have to look to avoid their second straight shutout of the season, or avoid being shut out, I should say, right. being shut out for the second time here as they were unable to pick up any points. And remember I said at the start the of the game, there was absolutely no wind. You look at the flag now, that has completely changed as well as it's now coming out of the south pretty stoutly, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like it's blowing left to right, or right to left here, I should say. So, that'll cause the ball to fly a little bit here. Uh, Maybe not distance-wise, but yeah. certainly uh, it'll matter in purposes of, you know, if you ever attempt a field goal or something of that nature, you're going to have to kind of pay attention to that win. But it is going to be Skyler Seagraves on to kick it away. Again, Deontay Wilson back to receive. Again, a 12 nothing ball game. Just a two-score game, though, for the Red Ravens. Certainly not out of this one just yet. And Connor Harbin here with you today. Glad to have you join us for the conclusion of the Red Ravens football season here today. Seagraves is going to kick this one away. It's going to be a kick fading over towards the left-hand side. It's going to be fielded about the 15-yard line. Short kickoff here for Seagraves. It is going to be picked up by Wilson. He'll be able to take this one to the 32-yard line, and so that's where we'll see the Pirates set up here for their first drive of the second half. So once again, we talked about it during halftime, 272 yards through the air for the Independence Pirates. 16 of 19, Brock Doman. Of course, longest pass play was 29 yards. And of course, that 26-yard pass across the middle for the lone touchdown we've seen here today. So we'll see what the Pirates have cooking here. Of course, it's going to be Pat Bowen back in the backfield. This looks to be pistol formation here on first down. Going to have a handoff. Bowen trying to bounce this one off to his left. Going to be roped down after a very short gain. Maybe give him one if that. It looks like we may have ourselves our first injured player of the day. It looks like a pirate is down on the field. Looks like that is going to be, I believe that's Thomas Le mm -hmm. Who's from France, by the way. Who is from France, one of the international players here on this independence roster. You actually have quite a few. Maybe you have actually a couple players from France. But he is going to be hurt on the play here. So, tell you what we'll do. Couldn't take it in injury timeout. Come back here in just a moment, see if he's okay. But again, an injured, in, an injured independence pirate on the field. You're listening to Red Ravens Football, US 98.1, Key with Ralph, did you pay the electric bill? Yes, Donna. I paid it using Community State Bank's online bill you pay. You know, you can save a lot of time using online bill pay from Community State Bank. Yes, Donna. I know. And it's really easy. It's really easy. easy, too. Just log into our Community State Bank account. And sign up for Community State Bank's online and bill pay. And sign up for online bill pay. Yes. Yes, Donna. We can do that for all of our bills. And you bills. can do that for all of our bills. Yes, Donna. Community State Bank is almost as smart as you are. Well, thank you, Ralph. Glad I could help. I love you, Ralph. Community State Bank. Member FDIC. I love you too, Donna. I'm the adult beverage you could have had. But they just didn't have what you were looking for. That won't happen when you shop Gillen's Retail Liquor in Coffeeville. That's because Gillen's carries the widest selection in the area. But on the unlikely chance they don't have what you're looking for, just let them know and they'll promptly order it for you. Gillen's Retail Liquor at 1713 West 8th Street with the largest, coldest cooler in the area and fast, friendly service you can count on. You'll never go home empty-handed at Gillum Retail Liquor. And back here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, again, an injured Independence Pirate on the first play of the second half. That's going to be Thomas Le Boucher. And but it looks like he'll be helped off by the trainers. So 
not putting much weight on that on that uh, leg of his. Hopefully, hopefully he'll be okay. You hate to see a player get hurt, um, but the, yeah. the, the trainers needs uh, needs some help there because yeah, was a he's a big he's a big boy. They're trying to take off the field there. Yeah, again, six five, three hundred ten pounds, a sophomore out of France, and so of course that'll be our first injured player of the day. Of course, Caulfield had a little bit of trouble with the injury bug last week, mm-hmm. but uh, have thankfully avoided that so far here today. But back here, once again, Veterans Memorial Stadium, 12 nothing. our scores. We get back to action here. 14 minutes, 45 seconds left to go here in this third quarter. Pirates with the football. It's going to be second down and 10. Ball on the 33-yard line. Pistol formation here as Doman takes a snap, takes the handoff, hops back to pass, but he's just going to fall down. Lost his footing there at about the 25-yard line. There with the quarterback hurry. That was more of a hurry than anything. Was Jordan Crawford. We were talking about the first one with Alan Henry didn't really touch him. That one was definitely not the sack, maybe not. Definitely didn't get a hand on him, but did get the quarterback hurry. So right. <laughs> we'll wait and see what the stats are there. But got to give it up to Jordan Crawford easily busting through the line on that play. Yeah, again, uh, getting the rush on that play. Like I said, we'll see if they give him the actual sack or not. But I think I think they probably will just by him touching him down. By virtue of being there, yes, yes exactly. exactly. So third down and 18 upcoming, 13 minutes, 58 seconds left to play in this third quarter. Doman pistol formation once again. Again, takes the handoff. Back to pass here on third down. Going to be hurried out of the pocket once again. I believe that was Crawford on the rush once again. Trying to find a man. Pass will fall incomplete. And that'll lead us to fourth down and 18. So a nice stop here on the first drive of the half here for this Confield defense. Absolutely. This is the way you want to start the half if you're on defense. Uh, uh, get that three and out. And now uh, hand the ball over to your offense. And now the offense has to make something happen here. Now, um, here on this punt, Independents will have the win to their back. Mm-hmm. So this could be a little bit longer of a uh, punt than uh, the normal. Yeah, so for the second time today, we're going to see Joseph Seidel. Excuse me, no, Stephon Forbes. Excuse me, on the punt. Prochet back still to return. Th- and Jacob Prochet back to return this one as the kick is away. Solid punt can be filled about the 39-yard line. Prochet with some room to run. Going to move back to his right-hand side. Still on his feet. Actually going to be able to find the sideline into Independence Territory. Going to have a late flag. And that ball going to be pushed out of bounds at about the, well, around the 40 three-yard line, but we'll have to wait and see what this flag is on. That one may move Confield back just to 10. Going to be thrown around the Independence 48. And just so when you think uh, Confield's getting something good going, a flag comes in and it's probably going to back it up. Yeah, it'll be a blindside block called here on Confieville, so that'll be a personal foul. And so they'll have to start their first drive of the half in Coffeyville territory, in their own territory, I should say. As like we were talking about at the half, every time Coffeyville seemingly gets a big player, does something that would give them an advantageous position, they get it called back. That is going to be their fourth penalty of the game, fourth penalty for 50 yards. Now, actually, fifth penalty for 50 yards here in this game, excuse me. But you're going to take over. Here, still on the 37-yard line. It's not the worst field position, but certainly you'd rather start on the independent side of this field. Of course, Caulfield going left to right on your radio dial as there'll be shotgun formation for Nick Arve in the Caulfield offense. Three wide receivers to the right, one back in the backfield. Courtney Jackson, that down back. Is, here's a pass out to the right-hand side. Going to be caught, but looks like it might be for a loss. And that one's put down about the 34-yard line on the catch. That was Javier Batiste. Just nowhere to go there. He'll set up second down and about 14 to go. Loss of four on the play. Yeah, Independence read that one pretty well from the start there. Uh, so another loss here for uh, Coffeyville. So yeah, second down and 14 upcoming here. Just getting started in the third quarter. Again, if you're just now joining us, 12 to nothing. Our score, a touchdown, and a couple field goals here for the Pirates. High formation, one wide receiver, two each side. Are they going to take the snap at the pitch out to the left-hand side? Jackson going to try to find some room between the guard and the tackle, or should I say the tight end and the tackle. We'll find a few yards, able to get around the original line of scrimmage. It'll be a gain of about four or five on the play. Set up third down and ten. Yeah, like I said, pick up about four. Third down, ten, third and eleven. Uh, it's still a long way to go here for the Scottsdale offense. Uh, they got to get something going here, though, because they... 
One, one they would have had decent field position, but unfortunately special teams pushed them back. Uh, but still, what, you still fired out, started out with first and ten. So, uh, again, the Scottsdale offense has got to get moving. Yeah, certainly you need, you need something. You need any kind of points at this point. You can't afford to keep giving the Pirates more opportunities to extend upon this lead. But it will be third down and 11. Ball in the 37-yard line. Arve back to pass, but now going to have to roll out to his right. Going to try to dump a man off. Actually finds Espinosa on the catch. And actually going to find him around the first down marker. We'll see where they spot this one. And I think they might actually get it. Yep. Ball going to be pushed about the 49-yard line. It's a gain of 12. And that'll be a first down. So, Arve to Espinosa, the fullback. Making a big play on the catching side of things. Yeah, about 12-yard pickup, uh, the, which is one more than they needed, and got that first down. Good job by Espinosa finding a kind of a weak spot there in that zone defense and was able to help out his quarterback and get open. Yeah, Espinosa, 6'3", 230 pounds from Mays, Kansas. First down and 10. Here's a handoff to Jackson. Jackson going to break through. He's into the secondary. To the 30, to the 25, the 20, the 10. He's going to go all the way. Ravens take flight. A Coffeeville touchdown. Courtney Jackson, 51 yards, and that will put Coffeyville back to within one score. What a run there by Jackson. Great blocking downfield to keep him open. He just kind of went slithered in and out of the defense and was able to then just outrace the final defender to the end zone for that touchdown. So that will put it within six, 12 to six. Skyler Seagraves on to attempt the PAT. And then giving some of the, uh, giving these Coffeeville fans something to finally cheer about here this afternoon. Yeah, so there'll be no second straight shutout. Obviously a big deal for the Coffeeville offense to get back on the board here today. PAT is up, and it is good. So 11-17 remaining here in the third quarter of play. Coffeeville back to within five. They trail the Independence Pirates 12-7. to We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to Red Ravens Football, U.S. 98.1, KUSN. Windsor Place has many residents who kept busy after retirement by staying involved in the community. Residents don't have to leave their active lifestyles behind when they come to Windsor Place. In fact, we encourage our residents to stay engaged in their favorite activities and to maintain hobbies and friendships in the community. For residents that can no longer venture out for activities, we keep a full schedule of entertainment, classes, games, crafts, and more. For more information, call 620-252-4929. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture, Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin in Butler, Missouri. And welcome back here to Veterans Memorial Stadium. A 51-yard rushing touchdown for Courtney Jackson. Puts Caulfield back to within five points, 12-7. to Here's 11-17 remaining in the third quarter. Skyer Seagraves on to kick it away. Another short kickoff. This one going to be filled about the 10-yard line. Again, going to be Deontay Wilson on the return. Going to move to about the 27-yard line, but going to be roped down there. Trying to find the man who made that tackle. Trying to get a number for you. But it looks like that was actually me, Dorian Lewis. No. Actually, it might have been Dorian Lewis who makes the tackle there on that kickoff return. Trying to get you a right number there, but I think it was number 20 down there. So, Lewis with the tackle, and Independence will take over here, ball on their own 28-yard line. What a run there by Jackson. He just followed his blockers and was able to get down there for that touchdown. So, of course, we'll see Independence back out once again. A rare drive ending in a punt for them. Last time out is the first pass. Of the drive will actually be caught here by Brantley. They want to say he dropped it. And it looks like they're going to say he did not make the catch. So it'll be an incompletion here on first down. Set up second down and ten. Rare incompletion for Independence as well. Yeah, you can see everybody, all the coffee fields finish saying, no, no, he hit the ground. You can hear, even hear the groan from the crowd at first. So second down and ten upcoming now. And only dropped three passes in the first half. Brock Doman, 16 and 19, coming into the locker rooms. It's been a bit more tricky 
or independence here on this, well, at least on these first couple of plays in this second half. Sends a man in motion. That'll be Brantley joining over on the right-hand side. Going back to pass here with a five-wide receiver set. Going across the middle here. Almost finds Bowen. Whew. Almost found him right in the middle of five Red Ravens there, but just a bit overthrown, and that'll step third down and ten. I think the wind may have gotten hold of that one just a tad because it was just a tad overthrown, and they are throwing with the wind to their back. So uh, maybe that just got, out, uh, got up into the crosswinds just a tad bit. Yeah, so certainly a big play up coming here. Third down and ten. Oh, you know the def- defense is finally fired up now yeah. with uh, the team getting on the board. Now they got a chance to uh, get the ball back for their offense and, and – uh, Give a chance chance to take the lead here. Four wide receivers set. One back in the backfield. That is Bowen. Doan making some pre-snap adjustments. Play clock to five. Doan now going to get the snap across the middle. Going to be caught. That'll be a first down at about the 40-yard line. Making the catch there. That was Independence's Malik Mullins. And that'll move the chain. So a couple incompletions, but eventually Doan finds his man. He's found Mullen several times here today. Actually, your leading receiver on the day for Independence. That one good for about 12 yards there for the first down. Yeah, found him right at the first down line. That's exactly what you're looking for on a play like that. Design quarterback keeper here for Doman this time round. Punches forward. Going to find about three or four. Set up maybe second down. Actually, no, they're going to give him two. Again, counting not my strong suit, but second down and eight up coming here. Doman once again just pushing a, himself forward. Doman's a pretty big ba- guy back there as well, though. He's t- 6'2", 235 pounds out of Colorado Springs. Yeah, obviously, in the negatives, four rushing yards. One of my big issues with how you calculate rushing stats. Sacks are not rushes, but either way, here's a handoff on second down. That's going to be a negative loss. That's going to be a loss, I should say. Bit of a redundant kind of thing to say for me, Kyle. But either way, big loss there. It's once again, Caulfield defensive line just able to push through. And uh, make a stop, and we're going to have ourselves third and 12 upcoming. Yeah, well, that was just sheer strength there. The Coffeville defense pushing the offensive line back and not giving Jalen Smith much running room, no running room uh, to, uh, at all. Yeah, and that's really been Coffeville's strong suit here today. The run defense has been there for the most part. Again, we're talking about the half. Most of Independence's yards today have come through the air, and that's exactly what they'll do here on third down and 12. Here's a dump pass across the middle. Actually going to have a whole lot of room. He'll have nearly the first down, actually going to get across in the end. And they're going to say the ball came out. Coffeyville at least says the ball came out. No indication from the refs just yet. But I think they're going to say he's down. Tylen Grant's actually down there with the football, but they're going to give him going to give him all the progress. They're going to say he's down, and that'll be a first down once again. So Malik Mullins again. First time round, made the reception on third down. This time, does the exact same thing. 15 in their pickup there. Enough for that first down. First down and 10, according to the scoreboard. Ball on the 52-yard line, a.k.a. the 48. Now into Coffeyville territory. Doman back to pass. Slant round across the middle. Another reception here. Again, right back to doing what they do best. Again, a reception for Mullins, by the way. Eventually going to be swarmed, but the ball is going to be caught around the 35-yard line. So a pickup of about uh, 13 yards. And once again, just going to move the chains. Fourth first down of the drive. As Independence just keeps moving things along here. I mean, they're, they're getting in chunk yardage. They're getting 12 yards, 15 yards, 16 yards, like that one play was there to Malik Mullins to move down to about the 32-yard line. And they're just getting in chunks right now. Caulfield defense has got to wake up here. Four wide receivers set. Again, shotgun formation here for Doman. Jalen Smith still in the backfield for the Pirates. Pass play, going to send it on out to the right. Going to have a whole lot of room. Deontay Wilson going to be pushed up the sideline here. Going to be pushed out around the 14-yard line. So make that another 18-yard gain. They just continue to chunk into this Coffeyville defense. And now we'll find ourselves within the red zone. Yep, 17 yards on that one. And it's going to be, uh, once again, first down. Now, weather well, getting a little testy, by the way, here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. See some umbrellas starting to pump in and out see some jackets start to be well luckily this isn't last week when we were sitting on the press box top of the press yeah box. we definitely got away with one there yes but either way uh, back to pass again on first down another reception this time going to be caught by Davian Watkins not going to be enough for a first down but still going to gain a few yards some words changing to the fact here tell you what that's maybe not what we need here 
after what we saw last week against Garden City. Mm-hmm. But going to gain about three yards after the play, so we're actually on the play. Yeah, last week Words got, are hard. Last week you got feisty. Last week, yes, awfully feisty. Eventually culminating in a bad penalty for Coffeyville. But second down and seven upcoming. Ball on the 12-yard line. Doman going to take the snap immediately, just flushed out of the pocket. Coffee will send in the house on that one. Doman, not much to do, but just slide off to his right for what will be a quarterback sack. A couple of Red Ravens down on the play. It basically just seems like Coffeeville immediately just burst through the line there. I don't know if there was any blocking on that one necessarily yeah. because Doman, he had no chance Doman on that one. None at all. He's, he uh, basically got the ball and looked, and he said, oh, my goodness, and just took off toward the right to try to get away from uh, getting in. And then, again, he just slid to kind of protect I don't know himself. if that was a miscommunication or what, but either way, it's going to be a loss of about four, set up third down and about 12 to go. Ball on the 17-yard line. Doman again back to pass, looking towards his left, going to find an out route, going to be caught at about the 10-yard line. Eventually pushed out about the nine, so a gain of about six. It'll set up fourth down. Fourth down as the catch is made once again by Almount Almount Smith. And if we look back to our south here, it looks like we have another storm system moving into the area, so it could get uh, a little uh, wet down there pretty quickly. And like you said, the umbrellas have already popped up uh, for, as, uh, again, some rain starting to move into the area. And so for the third time today, we'll see Wilson Yee head out onto the field to attempt what would be about a, I don't know, about 25-yard field goal. He already two for two on the day. This would make it an eight-point lead if good. Snap is good. Kick is away, and it's going to be blocked. Another blocked field goal here for the Coffeyville Red Ravens, and that'll keep it just a five-point game. Big play there by the special teams. Their second block kick of the game. Absolutely. Great job by the special teams to block that. No points for Independence, and Coffeyville will take over, um, I think, at their own 20-yard line. As uh, uh, Again, if, you're, if, it, if the attempt is inside the 20, they automatically move it out to the 20. Anything outside the 20 is where they set up from. And so you'll put the ball on the 20-yard line here on the right hash. A big drive up coming here, a big opportunity for the Coffeyville offense. Like I've been hammering through, You're, you had a rough first half. But this is the moment you can turn things around, and you can put yourself in the lead here. That could be the game changer right there. Let's keep that in mind. That could be the game changer right there. But of course, you still got to get it done here on offense. Nothing is set in stone. Going to be I-formation. One wide receiver to each side. Arve dropping back here on first down. Going to hand it off. It's going to be Courtney Jackson pushing through. Going to find three or four here on first down. And it'll set up second down in about, uh, I'd say, we'll see where they spot it. About give them about, about two. two yeah. Give them about two. And. Like I said, my depth perception really needs work. <laughs> but uh, You're about, way up here, though, to be honest. Yeah, I don't usually call games from up here. You know that. Uh, usually more down over on the floor yeah, in my I, uh, usual capacity. The elevator was taking forever. I took the stairs <laughs> up, and I wish I wouldn't have taken the stairs I think up. This I was is, exhausted. Believe it or not, I don't think this is the highest up I've ever called a football game from. I think when I was at Oklahoma State, I called oh, a game up on the up roof of, that, uh, of Boom Pickens Stadium. But either way, I formation once again here on second down and eight. Pitch out to the left-hand side. Jackson trying to find some room, going to be caught from behind. Actually falls backwards a little bit here. We'll see where they spot that football. It looks like back to the original line of scrimmage. And maybe even a yard behind it. So we've got ourselves third down and ten after the three-yard loss here by Jackson. The bugs are starting to want to fly, and they're trying to get out of the elements as well. not a bug. Well, what is that? It's like a... I don't something know. fell out? The, I don't know what it is, but either way... I thought it was a bug at first. Something fell, yeah, something fell out of the ceiling. <laughs> something fell out of the ceiling and kind of scared me a little bit there. But either way, third down and 11. See what Caulfield has cooking here. Need to get to the 30-yard line to move the chains and kind of advance things along. Going to go with the same formation, two backs in the backfield, including Jackson. Here comes the blitz. Harvey back to pass, going to have a flag. Throw over to the left-hand side, but it's going to be fall incomplete. That's probably going to be a free play there because uh, it was thrown as the, as the ball snapped, so that could be offsides. So uh, maybe Coffeyville will get in that free play here and make it 35 here. Yep, will be offsides here called on Independence's Carlin Vigors. And so, instead of third down and 11, going to have third down and six. Can he get a free play? Can he free opportunity here? To move those chains along and keep things going on here. So 12 to 7 our score. Caulfield trailing by 5. 502 remaining here in the third quarter of play. You got to take advantage of this. If uh, Independence makes a mistake like that, you got to take advantage of that mistake. 
Yeah, this would be a prime opportunity here. We've seen teams take advantage of Coffield penalties over the last couple of weeks. Feel awfully good to see Coffield do the same. But again, same formation. Two backs in the backfield, including Jackson. Harvey going to take the snap. Going back and actually have a delayed handoff here. Pushing forward, going to get a couple, but still going to fall short of the fourth down or the first down marker here. And it looks like we may have ourselves. Well, no personnel change just yet. Nope, there it is. We're going to send Skyler Seagraves out to pump once again. I think I thought about it for a second and you realize that eh, probably not the best, uh, probably not the best part of the field to be trying to uh, fake. Although they did do it last week in their own part of the field. Yeah, but do you do it on the 24-yard line, trailing by only five? In the third quarter. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's probably a bit think, more of a... I think you let your defense keep uh, doing doing your talking yeah, for I think, you. I think maybe you give the defense another opportunity here. I don't think it's really time to maybe give uh, anything away. So Seagraves on to punt once again. Snap is low, but handled. Seagraves almost. That one block. Able, really just lucky to get that one away. Going to bounce at about the 45-yard line, and that is where it's going to be picked up. So, Independence going to start in their own territory, about five yards shy of midfield. Again, leading this one by five, 12 to seven, with 3:58 remaining in this third quarter. As uh, just give me two seconds here to get the actual yards. 27-yard punt by uh, by Seagraves, but again. Uh, a lot of that had to do with that wind. He was kicking into a harsh wind, and we've had to close the windows here uh, for the most part because, uh, well, the rain started we falling don't... in a little bit, but it was also going to get very stuffy in here very quickly. I also realized I also need to hear the PA guy. But either way, it's a handoff to Bowen here on first down. Going to get maybe a yard or so before he's eventually roped down. Pulling back the curtain there a bit. Set up second down and nine, yeah. If I was a little bit taller... I hate calling games behind windows. I'm not a big fan of it. Are you used to? So used I'm trying to, to. I'm trying to look above this very tall window here to get maybe some more natural light. I don't know. Could I do that? I'm, I'm not sure. Second down and ten. Doma going to take the snap. Actually going to try to move forward, but he's actually going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Another sack here for this Coffeyville defense. I believe that makes it six sacks today. Yeah. Uh, again, they they've been all over all over him today. So not really giving him a shot. Now. It's been about, it's been a game of high highs and low lows for the Independence passing game. That is for sure. A lot of quarterback sacks given up, but still a very high completion percentage here for Doman whenever he is able to get that football away. So third down and 11, under three minutes to go in this third quarter. He'll drop back to pass once again, looking over to his left. Now it comes across the middle and actually almost intercepted, but two Red Ravens actually going to run right into each other there. And now it looks like we may have an injured Red Raven once again. And he was one of the Red Ravens that ran into each other there. Yeah, it looks like now one of the players, but that was Dylan Gantz coming across the middle of the field, and the other one trying to get a number on that. But tell you what, we'll have that for you after we take a quick injury timeout. Two minutes, 50 seconds remaining. We'll have a fourth down and 11 when we come back. Independence leads this one 12 to 7. Listen to Red Ravens football, US 98.1 KUSN. Hello, Al Perky here, Perky's Used Cars. Are you looking for a good used car or pickup at an affordable price? Well, so, we'd love to have a chance to help you out. Same location, same phone number since 1969. We're here to stay. Our current inventory is on our website at perkysusedcars.com. Plus, we have vehicles arriving daily. Every car sold comes with our 30-day limited warranty. Before you buy, give us a shot. We're located a half a mile west of Buckeye on 1200 Road, southwest of Coffeyville. PerkyShoesCars.com. And welcome back here to Veterans Memorial Stadium. The injured Red Raven was Trevin Stacker. He's actually able to come off to the sideline under his own power. Actually ran into his own teammate, Dylan Gantz and Trevin Stacker. Actually both going for an interception on what was a pretty poorly thrown football. Unfortunately... They just kind of ran into each other there. So a bit unfortunate. However, the good news is, is that was third down. So fourth down and 11 upcoming, and we're actually going to see Stephon, uh, Stephon Forbes back out to punt once again for the Pirates as Jacob Prochet is back to receive yet again. So no, 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 good stop here for the Caulfield defense as the punt is away. Solid punt here for Forbes. Prochet going to call fair catch. Actually touched a little bit here. Isn't that a uh, violation? Yeah. And now Prochet's down on the field. Yeah, and he just threw his helmet off. He's That that one hurt pretty bad. Now I'm just wondering here, 
and where potentially the flag is. Yeah, well, yeah, Coach Coach Liker is living down there. He's like, hold on, he got hit. Where's the penalty? Yeah, so Prochet, the injured Red Raven, we'll go, ahead and take an, up. we'll go ahead and take another injury timeout, Kyle, as we wait this one out. But again, Caulfield going to take over around their own 16-yard line when we come back to 42. 12-7, our score, Caulfield trails by 5. Listen to Red Ravens football, US 98.1, KUSN. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle? Or even a boat? Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeeville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies, so they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeeville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. At CRMC Medical Group, our primary care physicians and providers focus on ways to keep you and your family in good health, as well as care for them when they're not. Our family medicine and women's health physicians are accepting new patients. We have convenient office locations in Coffeeville and Independence with extended and Saturday hours in Coffeeville. If you need a physician or need to make an appointment, please call 620-688-6566. That's 620-688-6566. Zone Power actually put his helmet back on as he heads to the sideline. So I don't think we're going to see him out of this contest for very long here. But I want to go back to that punt. Yeah, I was about to rant there. I'm not <laughs> quite sure where the maybe the call was on that one. Because it looked like he called that one fairly early. He gave himself up on that one. Right. But, uh, yeah, maybe. And Coach Liker, was not, he was out there yelling at the ref saying, come on, where, where's the penalty there? He, he gave himself up. Yeah, for sure. And so, of course, thankfully that one could have been maybe a little bit worse. But looks like Prochet is good to go. Still talking with the trainer down there on the sideline. But meanwhile, the Caulfield offense takes over once again. Ball on the 17-yard line. It's going to be I formation here. Handoff on first down. Moving up the middle of the field. I believe that's going to be Star Thomas back on the field. You'll actually be able to find quite a few here on first down. Able to get to about the... We'll get about the 23, 24 yard line. So a pickup here of about six on first down sets up second down and four. Nice little run there. Just kind of went in between the tackles and just kind of moved around. Uh, made a, made one man miss and was able to get up there uh, for a good pickup to start this drive. Now second down and four upcoming. Really going with the eye formation. Here at this stage of the game, a pitch out to the right-hand side. Going to be taken by Thomas. Thomas going to choose the right time to cut this one up. He actually has some room to go to the 40-yard line, to the 45. Spins around. Going to be finally brought down at about midfield. Going to be a pickup of about 27 yards. Tell you what, that's the Stars Thomas we saw a few mm -hmm. weeks back uh, when he uh, scored four touchdowns and gets it all the way up to midfield. Well, near midfield, about the 48-yard line. Yeah, big carry there. And actually, what if I told you that wasn't Star Thomas on the carry? What if I told you that was Dorian Lewis? Actually getting through the middle of the field there. So big carry for Lewis. About 27 yards. And you'll now be looking here at about, well, the 48 instead. Excuse me. So first down and 10, ball in the 48. Harvey again going to hand that one off to Lewis. Lewis going to get to about the 50-yard line this time around before he's brought down. He'll set up second down and eight. And I said this last week, and I didn't really want to say it this week, but I saw lightning off in the distance. So well, we'll have to kind of wait and see where that one goes here, Kyle, as we see some fog starting to overtake the old factory off to the distance. Like I was telling you, it's quite the view here from the press box oh, yeah. at old Veterans Memorial Stadium. You can see lots of things out here. First time here, by the way. I told you that, too, mm -hmm. right? Never actually been here. I've been here for two years and two months. Just never been able to make a coffee bowl. Community college football game. So, quite the exciting experience for me. Imagine what it would look like if it was a little bit sunnier outside. But either way, pistol formation here for Arve. Going to send a man in motion. 35 seconds left in the quarter. Arve going to roll out to his right. Doesn't have a whole lot of time to pass. Able to find a man. That'll be Cortarius Wilson. He didn't gain much tell you what on that play, but could have gone a lot worse with Arve having to roll out of the pocket so early. Yeah, he I basically got right across the, line, uh, the 50 yard line to the 49. Pick up about one. Yeah, they'll take the one yard here. It'll be third down and eight, but we might have seen our final play of the quarter. 
Caulfield just going to go ahead and head towards the sideline. So we'll head into our final 15 minutes. This one, just a one-score game, a very exciting contest left to be had here in Coffeyville. The Independence Pirates do lead this one, though, at 12-7. to We'll see who comes out on top when we come back. But in the meantime, you're listening to Red Ravens Football, U.S. 98.1, KUSN. Over the past 20 years, many kind words have been used to describe Windsor Place, the services we provide to seniors, as well as the people who work for us. There is one word in particular that we've come to cherish. That word is unique. Maybe that's because the word unique so perfectly describes everything we do, everything we are, and everything we strive to be. If you would like to know more about what makes Windsor Place unique, we invite you to call 620-252-4929. There's a lot going on in the world right now. At H&R Block, we want you to focus on your business while we handle your books. From payroll and bookkeeping to expert tax preparation and advice, we are ready to put our expertise to work on your small business or personal tax needs. For the year-round services you need and the one-on-one attention you deserve, partner with H&R Block Business Services. Stop by our offices at 502 West 12th in Coffeyville or 101 East Main in Independence. And welcome back here to Veterans Memorial Stadium. Connor Harmon here with the U.S. 98.1 KUSN. Joining alongside me is Kyle High. Our final 15 minutes of action. Coffeyville with control of the football. They'll have third down and seven ball on the 49-yard line, the Independence 49-yard line. As uh, Coffeyville scores the lone touchdown of the third quarter, a 51-yard touchdown run for Courtney Jackson to pull back to within five. But Independence does lead this one 12 to seven. So a very close ball game here today in Coffeyville. And, uh, the Red Ravens will set up first, and actually third down and seven, excuse me. Again, ball on the 49-yard line. I formation, pitch out to the right-hand side. Going to be Dorian Lewis on the carry. He's not going to be able to find enough room. He'll find about three and not much more. He'll set up fourth down and four. But, dare I say, Kyle, as it does look like Skyler Seagrass is going to be sent on the field. I was about to say, eh, this one's maybe, you maybe think about it here, but... Well, no, we're going to send Skyler Seagraves out once again. You could see something, though, here, I think. I think this is an area of the field that you can pull this play off. They pl- pulled it off last week. Um, I think maybe this could be something you could see some in- something interesting. Yeah, you definitely have to stay alert if you are the Pirates because Caulfield does need that score. However, you can still play it safe. It is still 14 and a half minutes left to go in this quarter. And you now have the wind at your back. Yes, so Seagraves is on to punt. Snap is away. Kick is up. No trickery this time round. That ball just going to be abandoned. Going to take a bad hop, and so it'll be a touchback here. And Independence will take over starting at their own 20. So we'll see once again this Independence offense has been picking up quite a few yards. In fact, 346 total yards of offense today. But only the one touchdown to show for it. Coffeyville has really done a good job of keeping them down when it counts. They've been able to move the ball. They just cannot seem to find the end zone. Yeah, that's uh, basically that's called playing the defense, keeping them in the, between the 20s uh, for the most part. They've been doing a lot of damage in between the 20s, but they cannot get the ex- uh, exclamation point. So we'll see if Caulfield's defense can find themselves another stop here and keep this one within five, as it will be pistol formation here for Brock Doman. And again, it looks like it'll be Bowen in the backfield. Three wide receiver set. you got two to the right here. It's going to be handoff to Bowen on first down. Going to try to move over to his left. Dives forward. Finds a couple. Second down upcoming. And picks up a couple of uh, yards there. I've always uh, li- this is new this year for Coffeyville, the electronic down marker over on the other side, which uh, very much pleases me. It makes it a little bit easier to see. Yeah, it. I've never seen that before, actually. I, was, I, was, I noticed it earlier, and I'm like, <laughs> hmm, I've <laughs> never like seen that much. before. That's nice. So second down and seven upcoming. Big pitch, actually going to hand it off going the other direction. It's going to be Bowen on the carry once again, shoved out of bounds just shy of the first down marker. Will be third down and short upcoming, though. Make it third down and about... And I'll say about two yards to go. So, gain a five here for Bowen. And they'll set up shop here at the 28-yard line. Obviously, Independence trying to pound the rock and probably just try to drain, trying to waste some clock here. So, <laughs> Coffeyville doesn't have a chance to get back into this as the fog and rain starting to get a little thicker here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Yeah, you can't even see the factory at this point. He's going to carry on third down. And actually, I don't think he's going to find any room. 
I don't think he makes it. As Bowen just trying to push that one up the middle, but immediately met by the entire Red Ravens defensive line. And once again, that's going to lead ourselves to another punt. So, once again, Cottonville finding, I believe that might have been their first three and out of the day. In fact, and so, we'll see once again Stephon Forbes back out onto the field. And as we'll also see Jacob Perche. So it looks like he's good to go. Like I said, coming off the field with his helmet on, I think that's probably an encouraging sign that he's okay and ready to go. Absolutely. And uh, he's, expo- he's an explosive player back there. He, if he can get his hands on the ball and find some space, he can, he can run it back. We saw it earlier, unfortunately. His big run got, you know, uh, t- returned because of a penalty. This punt is away. Going to be drifting off towards the right. Actually going to bounce out of bounds. So no chance for Proche this time around. They don't want any, they don't want any part of Proche. Well, the wind also blowing in that general direction as well. So even if he did, maybe that ball getting pushed out just a little bit there. But either way, that means Coffeyville will take over here at about their own 38-yard line. Again, trailing by 5, 12 to 7. Here with 12:29 remaining here in this contest, Coffeyville, of course, biggest play of the game, actually longest play of the game total, uh, would be that 51-yard run for Courtney Jackson, the lone touchdown, the lone score today for the Red Ravens. But it would be nice if they could get themselves a second one here. And that was a quick drive. That was just a four-play, 62-yard drive. It only took 2:15 off the clock. So Coffeyville does have quick strike capabilities. Yeah, 12:29 left to go in this game. Shotgun formation here for Arve. Going to pitch it out to his left here on first down. That will be Star Thomas on the carry. Going to be able to move it up the middle, actually finding himself a hole there. Maybe not where the play was originally designed to go, but I'm sure he'll take that. A gain of about uh, eight or nine here on first down. We'll give him nine. He'll be second down and one. That was an interesting play where Star Thomas was lined up to the side of him, and then he just kind of kind of pitched it to him a little bit. And it worked because what it did, it drew the defense into the quarterback, and uh, Thomas was able to make uh, a few guys miss and get a big gain there. Able to cut back towards the middle of the field. Mm-hmm. So second down and one upcoming ball on the 47-yard line. Arve going to move back under center here. Of course, Thomas, the down back. Two wide receivers set, one to each side. Arve going to hand it off here to Thomas on first down. Able to find a gap, able to find a lot of room. To the 35, to the 30, to his left. Going to have some open field. Can he stay on his feet to the 15, to the 10, to the 5? Finally pushed out of bounds about the two-yard line, but a big gain there for Star Thomas. Coffeyville's knocking on the door. Oh, my goodness. I, he, I think he ran out of gas a little there at the end and was able to be corralled by an independence player, but... Goodness gracious, Star Thomas showing what he did a couple weeks ago against Butler. It's a gain of 44. And Coffeyville, first down and goal from the three-yard line. Let's call that a 51-yard run for Star Thomas. 51, yes, math is hard. Yes. We're on <laughs> hour 47, Kyle, hour 47. This is why we keep me in the basketball realm. I don't have to know big numbers. <laughs> uh, believe me, I don't know the big numbers either. It's you go computer. triple digits maybe twice a year. Yeah, the computers are uh, doing all the work for me over here. So first down in goal. That's the important thing at the moment. Three yards to go. Nick Arve under center. I formation. Going to pack it in here. It's a handoff to Star Thomas on first down. Trying to move forward. Going to be stuffed. And it looks like it'll be about no gain on the play. Second down and three upcoming. Got to punch it in. The field goal does get you some points, but it doesn't give you the lead. In a game where scoring has been at a premium, I think you'd maybe rather take the lead and start putting the pressure on right here. Absolutely. And they're going to actually give him a yard loss on that play. So to now make it second and goal from the four-yard line. And Coffeville, they're just bringing power here in this formation. Yeah, Coffeville just bringing everybody in here. Going to put eight men on the line, three in the backfield including that's going to be Dorian Lewis back out there. It is a handoff to Lewis, trying to find his way out, but again going to be rejected. And so we'll have a third down up coming now. Able to get back. Well, they're actually going to give him back that yard to so make it third down and three. Again, third down and goal, I should say. From the three. I mean, yes, you can kick a field goal here, but, I mean, at this point you're inside the five-yard line. You're going to need the six here. And uh, not that will also give your defense another big booster. And this rain, which is starting to come down pretty hard now out there, this is going to affect the passing game of Independence most likely. Yeah, the blocked field goal here kept it within five. So a touchdown here would just give you the lead outright, even without the PAT. But you are certainly correct about this rain starting to pour. Doesn't come through well in our window, but... It is coming down hard. Here's a pitch out. Lewis going to take it, trying to push up the middle of the four. We're going to have a flag. He does get into the end zone. 
But I wouldn't call it just yet here. We might have ourselves a holding. Oh, it looks like uh, Arve, I couldn't tell about his reaction. I couldn't tell if he's excited or not, but <laughs> this is uh, probably going to be a holding and bring it back and just, oh. Uh, and once again, man, Cottonville certainly has a tendency to make penalties on the plays that you don't need them on. So we'll wait and see what the call is. But judging by the reactions down there on the sideline, I think this one's coming back. Chop block. Chop block going to move them back 15 yards all the way to the 18. See, now you've got yourself a third down and goal from the 18-yard line. Mm, that's a backbreaker. So we'll see what Caulfield has cooking here on this third down. You even got into the end zone. That is what makes it so frustrating. You make the play you need to make. Dorian Lewis able to push his way on through. And then you get called for the chump block. You move back 15 yards. And instead of taking a 13 to 12 lead, now you've got to find yourself, well, yet another big play. I've seen this way too many times this year. And it's not just against Andy. It's been against almost every opponent this year. When Caulfield gets inside the 10, all of a sudden you see penalties start appearing out of nowhere. So we're going to go I formation, one wide receiver to the right. That'll be Cortarius Wilson. Arve takes a snap, going to be a pitch out to Lewis on the right side. Going for that reverse, actually able to pitch it off here to Wilson. Wilson's still on his feet, but he's going to be back at about the 30. He has to try to make some room to cut up. Going to get to the 15, actually going to be a gain of three, where he ran about 40 yards to find that three yards. Trying to go for some trickery here, but it'll be fourth down and goal from the 15 after everything is all said and done. Independence read that uh, perfectly because they had a guy on Wilson already before he even got the football. He was able to power his way away from him, but again, not much on that play. And it looks like Coffville... Are they, uh, nope, I thought they were going to go for it. They'll go ahead and try to kick the field goal here. Skyler Seagraves on to attempt the field goal. It's going to be about a 30-yarder. This would make it a two-point game, if good. Left foot at Seagraves. Seagraves using the left foot to kick. Snap is good. Kick is away, and it is going to be good. So 8.47 remaining here in this ball game. Coffeeville moves it to within two. A field goal now would be enough to give you the lead, but we'll see if the Caulfield defense can continue doing what they've done for most of the second half. Back in a moment, you're listening to Red Ravens Football, US 98.1, Key was in. $1,600 rebate or payments as low as $99 a month for a new Lennox heating and cooling system. Does that sound too good to be true? Well, not at least cooling and heating in Independence. Where we offer reliable, groundbreaking, award-winning Lennox products that keeps your air perfect to make you more relaxed and energized. Call Lee's Cooling and Heating at 620-331-2310 for great products, great savings, and perfect air from Lennox. It's that time of year when the weather can change quickly, sometimes violently. Stay up to date with all the weather's changes and stay in the know when severe weather is threatening. Severe weather coverage is brought to you by Eck Heat and Air and H&H &H Roofing. So when severe weather threatens, stay in the know by staying tuned to KUSN. Welcome back here to Veterans Memorial Stadium. 8.47 remaining in this contest. Just a two-point ball game. Confabulous. 30-yard field goal for Skyler Seagraves. Again, they trail this one to Independence 12-10. to 10. Connor Harbutt here with you, US 98.1 at KUSN. Joined along by my partner, Kyle High, here today. Six plays, 62 yards there on that drive. But, of course, Coffeyville would have maybe liked a touchdown. But in the end of the day, you do at least find yourself three points, and now a field goal would be enough to put you out in front if you get that opportunity. Seagraves, the kick is away. Going to be good. Going to be fielded about the three-yard line. Looks like on the return, that's going to be Deontay Wilson trying to move out to his left-hand side, but he's going to be roped down at about the 13. Nice coverage there. I believe that was going to be on the coverage. That is one Marco Collins able to get the solo tackle out there to keep it just to a 10-yard return. That's kind of what you, that's what, that's how you want to start it. You want to pin him deep, and hopefully, now you can find yourself another three and out. Absolutely. Uh, good job there by uh, the special teams. And uh, we'll see if the defense can keep doing what they've been doing uh, for most of the day. And so, again, eight minutes, 40 seconds remaining here in this one. Caulfield going to have to find a stop here. 
Independence can certainly start to run out the clock a little bit. Both teams have all three timeouts as the first down handoff is given over to Bowen. Moves over to his left, pushed out of bounds. It'll be about a second down and seven up coming here. But like I said, both teams have all their timeouts. So it could be cruising for a very slow end of today's ball game. As this one certainly a game where you might see all those timeouts used. Second down handoff again going to be stuffed. Just nowhere to go for Bowen this time around either, and this is exactly what you want. You oh, want to make ahead. a third down and ten. Yeah, the def- defense is fired up right now mm-hmm. uh, and making some big plays out there. There's That was another loss of about three yards there, and now it's going to be third down and about 11 or 12, uh, depending on uh, where, where you're uh, looking at it. it looks yeah, like and third and I want to maybe say this rain actually plays more to Coffeyville's favor. Because the Independence passing game has been so on point here today, with the rain falling, the passing game becomes a little bit trickier. However, we are going to seek Independence go to the air as we have ourselves a five-wide receiver set, not really leaving a whole lot to the imagination here on this third down. I think the play clock moved here to about five seconds for Dahlman takes the snap, dropping back to pass with a lot of time to run, and now we're going to have ourselves a whistle. Whistle in the middle of the play. To kill that one. You don't see that very often. And you certainly don't see that very often. Because we're actually going to have a timeout ah. taken by Coffeeville. So, kind of late on that one, but they are going to grant Coffeeville the timeout. That'll be their first timeout of the second half. We'll take a timeout right alongside them. 721 remaining, 12 to 10 our score. Coffeeville trails by two. You're listening to Red Ravens football. US 98.1 KUSN. Everyone looks forward to a good meal. That's why we do dining differently at Windsor Place. We call it 7 to 7 Dining. Residents can come to the dining room anytime between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. for a home-cooked meal of their choice. Three specials are available throughout the day, along with a full menu, including all-day breakfast. If residents need a treat between meals, they can visit our self-service snack pantries. Come see what makes Windsor Place different at mealtime. Call 620-252-4929. Are you ready to move forward? Spring and summer enrollment at Coffeyville Community College is now open. Whether you're looking to complete an associate's degree, technical program, or certificate, CCC can assist in your educational journey. And CCC fits your schedule with face-to-face classes and online educational options. Contact the Student Success Center at studentsuccess at coffeyville.edu to schedule an appointment with an advisor. Back here after the Coffeyville timeout. Still going to be third down and 10. 721 remaining here in the final quarter of play. It's going to be still five wide receivers set for Independence. Doman back to pass once again here on third down. Looking to his right. Can have a man open. It's going to be caught about the 20-yard line. Actually be able to get himself to about the 25, and that'll be a first down here for the Pirates. As Davian Watkins able to haul that pass in and get the first down for the Pirates. So that will move the chains here. Could have definitely used that stop. Still have two timeouts remaining. You used your first one right before our last commercial break. But you still have two remaining, so you still can't stop that clock. Definitely not in hurry mode just yet. Here's a handoff to Bowen on first down. He'll just be stuffed once again. That run defense has been there. <laughs> yeah, it the, just continues to be there. Yeah, the minute he got the ball, he got smashed in the backfield. So another big loss there of about five yards on uh, on that play. Yeah, I mean, even with the 28-yard run for Pat Bowen earlier in this game, heading into the fourth quarter, he was only averaging 3.2 yards a carry. So that kind of tells you how successful the Caulfield defense has been today and really stopping independence and forcing him to go to that passing game. He's got to put it all together and stop the passing game as well, as we saw in that last third down play. But it is going to be second down and 15, a loss of five on the play as the clock ticks to just above six minutes, now down to 6.10 on the clock. Going back to pass here on second down, pump fakes, now rolling over to his right, trying to find a man out on the sideline. Pass is going to fall incomplete. Move to third down and 15. On the coverage, it looks like that was Jacob Prochet. Jacob Prochet on the coverage. And so we got third down and 15 upcoming, 6.02 remaining. That clock going to stop. See what Independence has cooking here. It's going to be a four-wide receiver set, shotgun formation, one back in the backfield. Of course, that is Bowen. 
Snap is made. Doman going to drop back to pass. He's going to be rushed. He loses the football. It's picked up by Coffee Bell, and they will score. Reese Collier with the sack. It's picked up. Coffee Bell scores. They'll take the lead. 5.57 remaining. Get excited, Kyle. I tell you what. <laughs> I tell you what. I, uh, although we are, uh, what is the, the stopping for? I don't know why everybody's kind of standing around. Might be trying to get Coffeeville back off, off to the side. Yeah, line. exactly. Yes. yes, after the play. But either way, a huge play, Kyle. The quarterback sack, Reese Collier, virtually untouched as he gets to the backfield. Doman had no chance on that play. Yeah, he uh, was able to just, uh, again, he got hit, dropped the ball, and a nice scoop and score there by the Red Ravens and into the end zone. And the Ravens have got their first uh, lead of the day here at 16-12. to 12. And I think we'll actually have ourselves a timeout taken here by Coffeeville. So, we'll have a timeout taken by Coffeeville here. So, tell you what, 557, he remaining in this ballgame. Coffeeville, like you said, their first lead of the day here at 1612. We'll take a short break, come back in just a moment. You're listening to Red Ravens Football, US 98.1 KUSN. Red! Did you pay the electric bill? Yes, Donna. I paid it using Community State Bank's online bill you pay. You know, you can save a lot of time using online bill pay from Community State Bank. Yes, Donna. I know. And it's really easy. It's really easy. easy, too. Just log into our Community State Bank account. And sign up for Community State Bank's online and bill pay. And sign up for online bill pay. Yes, Donna. We can do that for all of our and bills. And you can do that for all of our bills. Yes, Donna. Community State State Bank is almost as smart as you are. Well, thank you, Ralph. Glad I could help. I love you, Ralph. Community State Bank. Member FDIC. I love you too, Donna. Back here at Veterans Memorial Stadium after the touchdown on the quarterback sack, the scoop and score. Coffeeville going for two, trying to make this one a six-point game. I can maybe explain that more after the fact, but of course, Arve, he's actually going to keep it himself. Rolling out to his left, looking for a target. He might just try to keep this one himself. Going to spin around to his right, has to try to find it. Going to be pushed in. Does he find his way in? And they're going to say he does not. Oh, so, come on. It looked like he fell into Arve, the end zone. just a yard shy of making it into the end zone. This will remain a four-point game as they try to make it six. Because as it stands, if you kick the PAT there, it would have been a five-point lead. A touchdown would give Independence the lead back. But... If you scored two there, you would at least make sure that Independence had to kick the PAT. They don't find it, but they still have the lead, Kyle, and that is what's important. Absolutely. Now with the four-point lead, I think Arve there, I think he hesitated a little too much because it looked like he had plenty of, uh, of space to run there. Uh, but again, he, uh, they, uh, this Coffeyville offense, they've come alive here in the second half, finally getting something going, uh, and it's good, definitely good to see. And it's uh, we're, we're, in, we're in for a great game here in the last six minutes here. Yeah, Arve, the smallest quarterback on this Coffeeville roster, coming in at six feet tall, 200 pounds. He was heading into a pretty big linebacker there for Independence, I believe, on that play. I believe, uh, I thought I saw a number there. But either way, he was definitely outsized and outmatched there. He kind of hesitated a little bit, maybe just lower the shoulder, and you try to get around him next time, and you might have found your way in. But still, a touchdown is a touchdown. And so... 16 12 as we'll go ahead and keep it right here as Seagraves is on for the ensuing kickoff. 557, the defense, you're going to need to make another stop and get Caulfield back on offense because it's now it's up to you to start mm-hmm. running out this clock. Yeah. Independence, they're going to have to start hurrying up a little bit. The shoe's on the other foot. Yeah, it's, uh, it's totally uh, turned on its head now. Uh, Independence has been the team trying to drain clock and now, now they have, now they're behind and they are the ones that are going to have to speed it up, like you said. So Seagraves on to kick this one away. Kick is up, and it's going to be a solid line drive kick. That one actually going to head into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. So Independence is going to start their next drive right at the 20-yard line. And we'll actually have a flag yeah, on the play. I'm sitting there. I'm looking for it. I heard it's at about the 40. It's at about the 40-yard line of Coffee. Oh, okay. I see it over there, yeah. So on the far wait side. and see what this one is. Usually at that area, it's offside. And Seagrace caught all of that one. This will probably be some attack that they on at the end of the run, which there was no run, which would move the ball up to the 30-yard line. No indication just yet. (laughs) 
So it will be offsides, and like you said, it will be five spot, five yards from the previous spot. So that's actually going to give Independence the football here at the 30-yard line, in fact. So Independence going to start their drive here at the 30. Need to go 70 yards here again. Coffeyville leading now by four, 16 to 12. Here with 5:57 left to go. Looks like they got ourselves a new quarterback into the game here for the Pirates. This is the first down carry going to go for not much of anything? Pat Bowen on the carry. He'll get maybe about he one or two. Trying to find who the new quarterback is. Uh, there we go. It's going to be Tyreek Starks oh, so, into yeah. the game. 6'2", 205-pound freshman at Lakeland, Florida. He'll be into the game for the first time here today, replacing Brock Doman. Makes you wonder why the change here late. Doman might have actually been hurt thinking about it here, but here's a quarterback option. Going to be a pitch out. Bowen actually has some room to run. He's going to be able to get to about the 44-yard line. And you think about it, because that was a heck of a hit earlier. As now we've got ourselves some jawing in between Collier and a couple of Independence players having yeah. to be separated there. Yeah, so Ty, you definitely can't afford that right now. Exactly. As soon as Bowman uh, got knocked to the ground, he st stood up and like stood over the Coffeyville defender. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's never going to make anybody happy at that point. Yeah, but you got to be especially careful if you're Coffeyville right now because you cannot afford a personal foul. You cannot give up free yardage when Independence is trying to drive their way and trying to retake this lead. Starks back to pass here on first down. Going to try to find a man across the middle, but that one just underthrown, or that one thrown too far behind. Intended receiver Deontay Wilson set up second down and 10. But, yeah, you go back to the play that set up that touchdown. Doman got picked. Mm -hmm. He got racked by Collier on that quarterback sack. So you got to maybe figure that might have been part of it because Doman's not been playing bad enough to bench. Right. I and mean, you could also be going with a different personnel change Starks might be faster. Starks might have a bigger arm. You never know what the reason could be, but it is Starks in the game here as he does keep fit. Nope, hands it off to Bowen, and he's going to have some room to run. He's just going to be gone to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Independence back on top as the option play works. Uh. Coffeyville bites on the quarterback fake, and Bowen finds himself in the end zone for the first time today. 57-yard touchdown run, and uh, wow, just Co Coffeyville got sucked in. That, that is why they brought in Tyreek Starks. He is more of an option quarterback. And they bit on the fake, and Bowen had nobody touch him all the way 57, da 57 yards down the left sideline. So that'll put it to 18-16 here for the Pirates. Back out in front now. However, good news is for Coffeyville. If you want to try to find any positive here about going back down and now trailing by maybe two or three, one big play means there's still plenty of time left on the clock. Oh, absolutely. So... If you're going to give up a score, you might as well leave some time on the clock. But that is now going to be Wilson E. back on to attempt the PAT. This one is up, and it is going to be good. So 5-0-1 now remaining in this contest. A 57-yard touchdown run for Pat Bowen. Puts Independence back out in front, 19-16. We'll come back in just a moment. You're listening to Red Ravens Football, US 98.1, KUSN. I'm the adult beverage you could have had. But they just didn't have what you were looking for. That won't happen when you shop Gillum's Retail Liquor in Coffeyville. That's because Gillum's carries the widest selection in the area. But on the unlikely chance they don't have what you're looking for, just let them know and they'll promptly order it for you. Gillum's Retail Liquor at 1713 West 8th Street with the largest, coldest cooler in the area and fast, friendly service you can count on. You'll never go home empty-handed at Gillum Retail Liquor. Windsor Place has many residents who kept busy after retirement by staying involved in the community. Residents don't have to leave their active lifestyles behind when they come to Windsor Place. In fact, we encourage our residents to stay engaged in their favorite activities and to maintain hobbies and friendships in the community. For residents that can no longer venture out for activities, we keep a full schedule of entertainment, classes, games, crafts, and more. For more information, call 620-252-4929. Welcome back here to Veterans Memorial Stadium here in Coffeyville. A 57-yard touchdown run for Pat Bowen. Puts the Independence Pirates back out on top. They lead this one 19-16, 5-0-1 remaining in this contest. Connor Harbin here with you, US 98.1 KUSN. Joining alongside me is my partner, Kyle High. Wilson Yee back on to attempt the kickoff. Back to receive, of course, is going to be Dorian Lewis and Taven Jackson. Four play, 75-yard drive. Of course, uh... Explanation point by um, Bowen with the 57-yard run. 
Line drive kick here is going to bounce into the end zone for a touchback. And so, Coffeyville going to take over here within their own territory. 5.01 left to do something here. Field goal would tie things up. A touchdown, obviously, would put them back out in front. So, Coffeyville's offense, of course, they've had a bit of a resurgence here. All 16 of their points picked up here after the halftime break. Of course, six of those points, seven of those points, did not come from the Coffeyville offense. That, of course, would have been the scoop and score. But still, your offense has been there lately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's in the second half, it's been a lot look, looked a lot better. And again, well, you do all you need is a field goal to at least tie it up here, and you have the wind at your back on top of that. First down and ten, ball on the twenty-five yard line. It's a pitch out. First down run. That's going to be Dorian Lewis on the carry. Nowhere to go. He'll actually lose a yard here on first down. Set up second down and 11. Clock continuing to tick here. Now under five minutes to go. Do you think you need to rush here? Or, I mean, uh, kind of urgency here? Or do you still just kind of run your offense, take your time? You have- uh, with two timeouts still uh, left in your watch. Yeah, one. You have one timeout yes, yeah. left after he had to take one. On that uh, on that two point conversion after the touchdown, so you have one timeout remaining. Someone to think about here. Independence, meanwhile, they have all three of their timeouts remaining. High formation once again. Arve back to pass here on second down. Has some time to throw. Going to find Espinoza over on the right hand side, but he'll be pushed out of bounds. It'll be a short gain of about two. And now set up third down and about nine to go. So just about a two yard make there, and again, like I said, third and nine. Uh, Caulfield, uh, they, 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 they got to run something past the 35-yard line. Yeah, you're definitely going to have to find something here. You're definitely getting into that go-for-it territory. As you only have one timeout. And you definitely don't want to have to run a fourth down play near your own red zone. Well, at this point, you are you probably would have to go for it on fourth down because you only got one timeout to stop the clock. Independence would be able to run it out. Yes, have to and want to are two completely different things. And I think we're about to maybe find that out if Caulfield can't find this third down play. Arve is back to pass here on third down. Just going to air this one out. Has a man down there. It's Cortarius Wilson. Does he make the catch? No, it's going to be intercepted. Independence ball at about the 30-yard line. Independence 30, but they take control of the football. Nick Arve just airs that one out, trying to go for it all. Cortarius Wilson, he has more receptions than any other receiver today, but that ball was just picked off by Carwin Vigors. And that one definitely hurts, and that may have put the dagger in, depending on what uh, Coffeville can do here. Yeah, you only have one timeout remaining. Three minutes, 19 seconds left to play. So you'll be able to at least use one timeout, but Independence can certainly just start to Move that clock down a bit. A first down here probably ends your chances. Tyreek Stark's going to keep the ball for himself here on first down. Slides around the sideline, able to keep it inbounds, though. So tick, tick, tick goes that clock. As he'll gain a couple yards here on first down, sets up second down and eight. So second down and nine upcoming, excuse me. Now under three minutes left to go. Coffeyville still saving that timeout. You definitely want to save it on a fourth down, perhaps, if you can keep it within. You definitely don't need to use it right away. But again, a first down probably puts this to within uncomebackable territory, barring a fumble or some other. Stark's going to pass the ball here on second down, and that's actually going to be taken out of bounds. But a flag after the fact... Pass was caught there by, that was Nate Dameron. But I think he actually fell out of bounds. So that'll at least cl- stop the clock. We'll see. But we'll have to see what this flag is on. All right. Because, again, the first down would be disastrous. Well, the question is here, do you... It'll be a penalty here on Independence... And I'll back him up a few. So, we'll actually get ourselves, I believe, another second down play upcoming. It'll be second down and 14, 227. And actually, maybe not the best. Because now you'll just get another second down play. You got to run off a little bit of clock for free. 
And then the clock actually will continue to run. So they'll actually be able to get it down about two minutes here before they snap this one. And they're going to use every bit of it. Stark's going to drop back to pass here on second down, looking over towards his right, going to find a man complete at about the 33. Not enough for the first down, but it will sit up third down and short. And, this and on the catch, that was going to be Willie Brantley, once again finding himself another reception. It looks like Caulfield will use their uh, timeout here to stop the clock. So, yes, you're right. It will be the final timeout taken by Coffeeville. They'll have no more remaining. 201 remaining in this ball game. Again, Coffeeville trails by three. This upcoming play could be the one that decides the game, Kyle. We'll take a quick 30 second break. We'll come back in just a moment. You'll listen to Red Ravens football, US 98.1, KUSN. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture, Braselton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. And welcome back here to Veterans Memorial Stadium here in Coffeyville, Kansas. 201 remaining in this contest. Coffeyville trails by 3, 1916. It's going to be a third down and four when we come back. This could be the play that really decides the game. Coffeyville, no timeouts remaining. If you keep them here to fourth down, you might have an opportunity because Independents can't afford to run a fourth down play, not within Coffeyville territory. They'll have to punt it away, and then you'll get a chance to maybe do a few strikes downfield and try to find something. But if they get a first down here, you just take a few knees, and this one's over. Oh, yeah, first down pretty much ends the game here for uh, Coffeyville. So defense has got to really just tighten up here. Pistol formation, man set in motion. It's going to be Brantley heading towards the left-hand side. It's a handoff. No, going to be a flag that actually calls the play dead. Might have had a false start here, and that would make things slightly easier for Coffeyville. If that is the call, of course. Play was whistled dead, so we'll have to see. Yes, that will be the call. Going to be a false start here called on Corey Diaz, a freshman out of Kentucky. And so, instead of third down and four, things become slightly easier for the Codfield defense. Maybe make the stop here. It'll be third down and nine. Two seconds to run off the clock, now down to a minute 59. So, make, uh, like you said, it makes it a little bit easier here on the Codfield, uh defense. Uh, they, uh, the situation remains the same. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't change much, but it does back it up five yards, so it makes it a little harder for Independence to uh, get that first down. Yeah, like we said, in Coffeyville territory, they're definitely going to have to punt this one away. They cannot afford to maybe run a play, get that busted up, and give Caulfield great field position with under two minutes to go. But it's going to be shotgun formation. Stark's going to get it. He's going to try to carry it himself. Actually, only going to be able to find himself to the 30-yard line. It'll be a pickup of one. it will set up fourth down and eight. So there you go. I think we're probably going to see the Independence punting unit on because I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if you're if you're Jason Martin, you run another play here and risk giving Caulfield a great field position where you can at least maybe even try a field goal. No, they're going to go ahead and punt it here, but they're going to run down as yes. much clock as possible. Um, they can run it down to about a buck ten here, so Coffinville will have probably around a minute left to get back into this ball game. Yeah, they're going to take a timeout here. They do have three remaining Independence does, so... They'll just run it down here to about one. They'll take the timeout, and we'll go ahead and punt it away. Most likely, most likely, can't really say for sure just yet until we see the personnel that heads out into the field when we come back. So there is the timeout. It'll be taken by Independence. Their first one of the half. They'll have two remaining, but it will be a minute. I think they stopped the clock a little late there, but either way, it'll be a minute seven remaining when we come back. So. We'll see. Can Coffeyville pull one out of their hats here? You're listening to Red Ravens football. U.S. 98.1, KUSN. Hello, Al Perky here, Perky's Used Cars. Are you looking for a good used car or pickup at an affordable price? Well, if so, we'd love to have a chance to help you out. Same location, same phone number since 1969. We're here to stay. Our current inventory is on our website at perkysusedcars.com. Plus, we have vehicles arriving daily. Every car sold comes with our 30-day limited warranty. Before you buy, give us a shot. We're located a half a mile west of Buckeye on 1200 Road, southwest of Coffeyville. PerkysUseCars.com. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle or even a boat? Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeyville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. 
They represent numerous insurance companies, so they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeyville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. And welcome back to Veterans Memorial Stadium. A minute 10 remaining in this ball game. Independence facing a fourth down and eight on the punch it away. That's going to be Stefan Forbes back to receive Jacob Prochet. Big moment in this ball game. They fixed the clock. They did fix the clock. Said of course, they did reset it to 110. And so, Caulfield is at least going to get a final chance or two at finding the end zone here today. Forbes going to punt this one away. Caulfield actually almost able to crash down on that one. Punt's going to be relatively good, taking about the 25-yard line, but Boucher going to try to return this one. He's to the 30, to the 35, the 40. Actually going to have a solid chunk of yardage here. Actually able to get across midfield before he's finally brought down here at about the 43-yard line. So that's a great start here. Big return of about 33 yards to put Caulfield at least in Independence Territory. It looked like he was going to step out of bounds, uh, but then he looked looked ahead and saw a little more space and uh, decided to take it. And Prochet is really, really fast. So, uh, again, was able to get it uh, across midfield. Coffeyville's already done this once this year. They scored a touchdown with 115 left in the ballgame against Butler to win the game. Let's see if they have a little more magic here. And so we will actually have an injured Independence Pirate down on the field. Don't see a number just yet, but we'll go ahead and take an injury timeout. 55.2 seconds remaining. Coffeyville, they need a field goal to tie. They're going to start their next drive here at about the 48-yard line. We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to Red Ravens Football. Here's 98.1 KUSN. At CRMC Medical Group, our primary care physicians and providers focus on ways to keep you and your family in good health as well as care for them when they're not. Our family medicine and women's health physicians are accepting new patients. We have convenient office locations in Coffeyville and Independence with extended and Saturday hours in Coffeyville. If you need a physician or need to make an appointment, please call 6 6- 620-688-6566. That's 620-688-6566. Welcome back here to Veterans Memorial Stadium here in Coffeyville. Still can't get you a number here for the injured pirate. It looks like that's 26. That'd be Zykeef Johnson. Yep, that's who that is. Six and one, 180 pound freshman out of Columbia, South Carolina. He's having to be helped off here by the trainer, so hopefully he's okay. But the game at hand, 55.2 seconds remaining. Coffeyville with the football, first down and 10 at the 48 yard line. No timeouts, need to at least get a field goal. They're down by three, 19 16. A field goal ties, a touchdown obviously puts them back out in front. We'll be shotgun formation here for Nick Arve. He's back to pass on first down. Looking over to his left. Looking for a target, just going to drop it, just going to run it out of bounds. After getting a couple yards here, able to take it to about the 46. It'll be second down and eight upcoming here. And six seconds run off the clock, now down to 49.3. Smart play by Arve. Don't throw it down the field into coverage. Just take it down and also get out of bounds while you're at it to stop that clock. We haven't had an official timeout due to a Independence uh, player losing his uh, headgear, and he must leave the play. He must leave the field to play for one play. Now Skyler Seagraves down on the sideline, starting to practice those field goals. Could be a big opportunity for him upcoming, depending on where Caulfield is able to get this football. Again, going to be Arve shotgun formation. We got three to the right, one back in the backfield. That's Star Thomas. Arve back to pass. Again, going to be flushed out of the pocket, moving over towards his left. Just going to again take it out of bounds. Actually roped out. Swung around, just giving himself up, but Independence actually still going to tackle him out of there. That was Isaiah Major. Pretty, but he does lose a couple yards here. He'll put it right back to third down and 10 from the 48. It was pretty close uh, to being hit out of, out of, after being out of bounds. It was, it was borderline. Yeah, didn't get the call, so Coffeyville will be facing this third down and 10. At this point, it is a four-down game, so... You essentially have those two plays to get those 10 yards. You prefer to do it all in one chunk here so you can maybe spike the ball and stop that clock. Arve back to pass, going to try to find a man. Actually has one. That's going to be Isaiah Taylor, who makes the catch out of bounds. First down, Red Ravens. And they ever get creeping ever closer as they'll now be on the 35-yard line. 
You want... Still not in the field goal territory yet. All right, not, we're not in Seagrass territory We know territory Seagrass yet. is a very good punter, mm -hmm. but I don't think 55 yards is necessary where you want to attempt a game-tying field goal. And I don't know how windy you can tell it really is now because that flag is way down because of all the rain, so I'm not sure how hard the wind is still blowing out there. So first down and 10, ball on the 36-yard line, 37 seconds left. Big for Isaiah Taylor to get out of bounds there. Arve looking for a man, trying to pass it up the right sideline, but it's overthrown. Another few seconds will tick off the clock. Now down to 32.8. I believe that was Cortarius Wilson out there on the right sideline. No, I believe that was trying to get. Was that Wilson? Uh, I do believe so. Yes, Cortarius Wilson up the right sideline. Just couldn't find him over the top of the Independence defender. A little bit overthrown as well. So second down and 10. Getting ball still on the 36-yard line. Would be about a 55-yard attempt if you attempt a field goal from here. God, I'm not sure that's in Seagraves' range right now. Yeah, I definitely think you maybe want to find another 10, 15 yards to really give yourself an opportunity there. Arve again back to pass on second down. Again, going to look for Wilson. And again, it's going to be thrown away. But now we're going to have a flag, and we might have pass interference. That one might be called against the Pirates. Tell you what, we've had a few opportunities over the last couple of weeks, Kyle. Cannot believe it's been this long to see a pass interference call. But we're going to get one either way. But who is it on? I think it's probably going to be on Independence. Well, he was the defender was draped all over Wilson. I mean, he had hands all over him. That's got to be uh, defensive pass interference. We'll wait and see what the indication is from the ref. Here in, and it will be pass interference here on Independence. That's going to be called on Kaiwan McRae, and that'll move Coffeyville. Dare I say? Into field goal range. Spot foul at the 22-yard line. That's where they will move the ball, football to. And as of right now, this would make it about a, a near 49-yard attempt. Where, where were they set up at? So, well, 39 yards. I think it would be about 42. Uh, or somewhere, somewhere in that range. There, yeah. You taught me the math yesterday, and now I'm using it <laughs> for last week, and I think I'm using it against you now. Oh, either way, man. to the 22-yard line now, 27.1 seconds left. We'll worry about that when we get there. Exactly. As Arve going to send a man in motion. Going to fake the handoff. Arve rolling out to his right here on this first down. Looking for a target. Going to go for the end zone. No, incomplete. It'll drop out of bounds or a drop in the end zone. 20.3 seconds remaining. Mm. Looking for a target in there. I believe that was the tight end. I believe that was. Is that William Dennis in the end zone, I believe? I do. But, yes, that was William Dennis in the end zone. He was running a crossing route in the end zone just out of his reach, though. So that'll set up second down and 10, 20.3 seconds left. If you end up inbounds here, you're going to have to spike that football. Oh, yeah, you're going to have to move it quickly. Like, you definitely have to go at this point. Unless, unless you get the first down, that will stop the clock for uh, them to move the chains. Yes. So, second down and 10, ball on the 22-yard line. Again, Caulfield trailing by three here at 19-16, to 16, but they're knocking on the door. Arve back to pass. Going to go for the end zone once again. But again, Isaiah Taylor not able to bring this one in. And now we'll have a third down and 10, 16.2 seconds remaining. The one thing you hear, though, you cannot throw the interception at the at the very least. Make it an incomplete pass because I think you're in Seagraves' range now. Yeah, and also something else to consider. You cannot. You can't spike the ball now on third down. Right. So you're definitely going to have to think about that here. You have to get out of bounds. Right. Unless you, once again, get that first down. So, that that special teams, they got to be lined up on the sideline yes. here. And, and, it, just in case of the play doesn't get out of bounds, they got to be lined up ready to rush out there they as quick as possible. They have to go, go, go. But it's going to be Courtney Jackson back in the backfield. Arve, shotgun formation, three wide receiver set. Again, 16.2 seconds left. Arve, back to pass. Going to drop the football. Now moving to his left. Has to do something with it here. He's going to be That's stacked. That's not what you did. And that'll back they gotta go. about they the gotta 25. Go. And they have got to go. It's going to be fourth down about 13. The clock's going to tick down to about 6.6 .6 seconds. It's going to be stopped. And they've got to set up. They've got to kick this one in a hurry. Set the football. Seager's going to back up here. They're going to call the clock. It's going to be down to 4-3. They get the snap. The kick is away. Whistle going to blow the play dead. The that kick is no actually going to move too far to the right. But... The play was whistled dead, and I think we may have a timeout taken by Indy. Well, they stopped. People are going to be like, why did they stop the clock? Well, Independence was piling on there, and they stopped the clock so they could set the football. Now, you have to get off the football. Yeah. The clock will continue to run, but you can't pile on the football. That is what you call illegal. But either way, 
we're going to have ourselves a blown play here, a play with yeah, the dead. Yeah, it looks like Indy called the timeout. And I think Indy might have taken the timeout. Jason, Martin, Martin's, still Jason Martin's upset. He's wondering why they stopped the clock. He's yelling at the referees right now. Referees are talking things over here at the moment. Kicking unit's going to be sent back out onto the field once again. You definitely don't like that situation for Seagray. is having to basically just run on the field and kick a field goal out of nowhere. I tell you what, good job, though, by that special teams. They were on the sidelines ready to go if they if needed to be. Yeah, that was definitely how you had to handle that situation. But it looks like Seagraves might get another opportunity. Take this one to overtime. 2.4 seconds left, trailing by three. This is to tie the game. It's going to be about a 42-44 yarder. Yep, 42 yards. That's where they're standing up right there. So this would be like this would be like an overtime, where if you don't get any yards, where you start at the 25-yard line, a 42-yarder. Yeah, it's a 42-yard field goal here for Skyler Seagraves. Already has one field goal today. Could he make it two? We're now both standing up here, and a lot of people here standing up now. Yeah, this is basically, this is it, 100%. This is it. Yeah. We're either going to overtime or Independence will claim their fourth victory over Coffeyville in five years. And let's just take another seat because now we'll, another timeout call. now we'll continue to delay this Freeze one the kicker. just a little bit. I don't want to move off to a timeout. I really don't. I don't want to go to a commercial break. I'm not about to miss any action here. So let's go ahead and go over today's scoring summary as the referees once again get together to talk about things here. So obviously in the first quarter, it was Independence who started things off here. It was a 26-yard touchdown pass from Brock Doman to Deontay Wilson. The kick was blocked. So we stayed at six to nothing. Two field goals, both in the second quarter from Wilson Yee, one from 24, one from 30, pushed the halftime score to 12 to nothing. But after the half, it was basically all Coffeyville, uh, at least to a certain point. You had the 51 yard touchdown run for Courtney Jackson. You had the field goal for, uh, for Indy. You had the field goal for Indy. Excuse me. Kind of. I only realized I had three, uh, <laughs> I had three quarters worth of scoring summary, yes. and your program's crashed, so I'm trying to think about things here. Because I know after that we had the long touchdown run for right. Pat Bowen. To, yeah, it was about a 50. It was a 57-yard touchdown run. By and we Bowen. had the scoop and score. Yes, yes, we did. We had the scoop and score. Yeah. Reese Collier with the quarterback sack gave Coffeyville uh, the touchdown to give themselves. At the time, it was the lead, and so uh, it was 16-12. But then that Pat Bowen long touchdown run. And I tell you what. The good news here for Seagraves, uh, the, um, this ball is right in the middle of the hashes. This is dead down the middle. So we'll, we'll see if that's the way. Because some kickers like it on the left hash, some like it on the right hash. And a lot of times near the end, if you do have timeouts, they'll run it to the hash that the kicker prefers. Uh, yeah, so, but this course, one's right dead down the middle. So Of course, we're still talking about things here. We're having a full conference of the referees. And let me tell you, I don't necessarily know if I agree with the decision by Indy to take a timeout there. Right. Because... Yes, we know in hindsight, 2020, the field goal was missed. Mm -hmm. But you had Coffeyville rushing out there to, to get, get the special to do anything, there, right? So I don't know if, you, like, you want to ice him in that situation. He's effectively already iced by having to run out there and right. immediately kick. So I'm not quite sure if I agree if that is what the indication is. I mean, we're still waiting on any indication on what's going on because apparently we don't know what's going on down the field. It's a big conference down there as of right now, but. You did have an indie player, by the way, standing out on the field without his helmet on. I am kind and, of. And uh, I do believe that is a penalty, but That's, we'll see what I happens. I don't so. necessarily know if at the moment that would be a penalty. But either way, uh, yeah, I mean, we're just waiting. Yards here, so. <laughs> we're just waiting 2.4 seconds remaining here in this one. Again, Caulfield trailing this one 19-16. So while we're waiting, Kyle, just a reminder, if you want some more sports on the radio next week, we got that for you. We're not taking it off season. We're switching sports. We're covering Montgomery County Baseball, moving over to American Legion Baseball, Coffeyville, Independence, Caney, the whole likes, I think, all getting together on this year's Raw. Don't know what station it's on just yet, but make sure to stay tuned, because we'll be starting that coverage June 1st on, uh, well, in Bartlesville. I'll be making down a trip yes. to Oklahoma, games in Nawada this year, Winfield, Iola, Moran. I'm going to a lot of different places yes. that I haven't been before, and including also Pittsburgh as well, including on my birthday, in fact. So that'll be a whole lot of fun. I'll tell you what. Bartlesville Stadium is really nice, by the way. It's a pretty nice stadium. I've been there. Yes. I've called games in there, Kyle. Yes. Very I have. nice. Very, very nice. It, Ford Dungeon Stadium, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. I've done, like, maybe two. But still just kind of waiting here. It's kind of, And it's a big stadium, too. I mean, it's uh, it can see quite a bit of people. So 
Uh, yeah, we just uh, got people just kind of standing around. We got people signifying, you know, you know dead on know. the field. We got people signifying no good. Yeah, so. But <laughs> I don't quite know what's going on myself. I will be the first one to tell you maybe football not my area of expertise. Right. Uh, that's probably more so basketball, baseball, that sort of thing. But uh, well, well, and you got a coach from Independence standing out on the field in the in in the you know in the, in the referee with the referees. Yeah. But now that you got more referees over here <laughs> with, in the conference with Jeff of Laker, Laker. so I you got two different things going what is on. Right going now? on, it's just got a conference here, and uh, I don't know if they're saying that the clock should have kept running and the game should have been over, but Independence was piling onto the ball. You, you can't do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's obviously quite the situation here well here's the thing about the one bad thing though here Arve did the one thing you could not do there and that was take the sack yes. at that point you got to get out of the out of the pocket and throw the ball out of bounds that way your special teams did not have to rush out there like that uh, because you were giving them basically 10 seconds to get out there get the offense off the field and basically a snap immediately and so, of course, we'll wait and hear and see. And now the game's going to be ruled over. Oh, so, come on. They'll rule that the clock was stopped when unnecessary. And so, that'll be the football game. Coffeyville loses this one 19 to 16 on what effectively is ended by a referee conference. So that'll be the end of this one. We'll go ahead and take ourselves a post-game break. Coffeeville falls to 3-3 and on the season. In Independence, they will improve to 5-2. and A wild and wacky finish here tonight. We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to Red Ravens Football, US 98.1, KUSN. Over the past 20 years, many kind words have been used to describe Windsor Place, the services we provide to seniors, as well as the people who